Oh, hey guys. <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay. Um, oh, my video is not stuck. Hey, um, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, thanks. I, I was just looking at the uh, um, participant list and, and it just, you know, um, a lot of you joined um, pretty much the same time, I guess, suddenly. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll give we'll give the rest of the folks a little bit of time to uh, join us. You guys can feel free to <clears throat> carry on a conversation. And uh, in fact, what we'll do today is um, I don't know if you guys noticed. Okay, nobody chimed in. Nobody uh, posted in the forums or on the uh, video itself. Uh, but there was a bug in the code uh, that we wrote last class, right? I, we never actually ran it, but there was a bug that uh, nobody picked up on. Um, but anyway, I made a comment on the YouTube video uh, saying where the bug should be, all right? Uh, which uh, minute and um, which, which time mark? So you can take a look. <clears throat> but we'll fix that today. And, um, you know, uh, well, we'll wait, wait for, um, um, who was it, uh, Isaiah or Elizabeth? Um, no, Ricardo, Ricardo. No, no, Ricardo's done. Uh, so yeah, Elizabeth was going to take on uh, the um, code at this point, right? So yeah, well, let's wait for Elizabeth to join, and then she can uh, start. <clears throat> we'll we will we'll fix that program, run it, maybe play a couple of games, um, and then uh, you know if you have any other uh, <clears throat> ideas, we can try and implement them today involving arrays. I I, I thought of a couple just now, um, a little while ago. We can do one of those, or both, really, um, quite easy ones. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure we've probably, yeah, and I'm pretty sure we're probably, uh, it's kind of funny. All right, I'm pretty sure we've done this once in class, uh, not our class, um, many quarters ago, maybe, right? Yeah, it's uh, what it is, is basically just picking up a bunch of uh, random quotes uh, about, uh, so, you know, from, from Star Wars. OK, uh, actually, this was this uh, this this was inspired by an Internet post. Um, someone uh, took uh, lines from um, Star Wars and said uh, by replacing the word uh, force uh, with the word pants, uh, then the sentence could be made a whole lot better. Right, <laughs> and they posted like twenty-five or um, thirty such uh, lines from Star Wars, famous lines, uh, in which uh, the word uh, "force" was replaced by the word "pants." <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, so I thought, uh, well, you know, it, it sounds like a great thing to do in class. Uh, so <clears throat> it doesn't have to be uh, Star Wars and force. Well, we can start with that, right? So, um, but <clears throat> all we need to do is pick something. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think what we did in class, I remember now, right? I, yeah, I remember. Uh, we picked uh, quotes about chocolate, right? We picked, uh, because, you know, we just want to find something that, you know, you find a bunch of quotes about, right? Like chocolate, love, um, wine. Uh, so you, know, you can go to sites where you have like 20 or 30 quotes, right? About these things. Uh, so uh, and we took those quotes uh, and then uh, we entered a user a uh, loop where uh, you ask the user, uh, name something that you like or something like that, right? And name, name, uh, yeah, name a thing, right? And they might say something like, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, Martian, Martian crystal spring water or something like that, right? And then, um, and, and then the program will replace all occurrences of, uh, you know, if we took, took chocolate, for instance, right? Everything was about chocolate. So uh, replace all chocolate with Martian spring water and then say, here's your random quote of the day, right? It's like your eight ball or something you do in the morning to get a funny thing, right? Uh, and it uh, spits it out. I think we did all that in class. And it was even a face-to-face -face class, right? It wasn't even like this when we're actually actively coding. Um, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, um, yeah, we managed to get through that and actually play too. So we can do that. Um, yeah, unless you have other ideas. Oh yeah, you can also try these other things, right? I mean, if, if you're given a uh, string of letters, 
uh, array of letters, how can you tell if it's a palindrome or not, right? Um, palindrome is, uh, you know, it, it reads the same um, forward and backwards, like madam, I'm Adam, right? So it reads the same both ways. Um, <clears throat> we, we can do that. Uh, we can try reversing a string, uh, reversing an array, right? So I give you an array of numbers and then you have to just give it back to me in the reverse order. Uh, that's one. Um, or shuffling, shuffling an array, right? You have, you're given a deck of cards, right? So like a, an array of numbers, and then you have to return it back to me with all the all the items shuffled. You know, you know randomly. You can't just um, in in a yeah. How do you define that? That's interesting. Isn't it? But you know, that's uh, this uh, shuffling thing. Things we can do. You know, is there's the possibilities are endless. Anyway, we can keep talking for a few more minutes. Um, or I, you know, I, I, I can stop talking. You guys can talk, right? So you, you guys talk, you can rope me in if you need to, if you have any questions, you rope me in. Uh, we'll start uh, around 8, 10 or so. Uh, anyway, Elizabeth is not here. Uh, well, if uh, Elizabeth doesn't pick it up, you know, um, uh, Jing Yang who wanted to go. Uh, and I think he wasn't the, you know, he was on the, in, in the queue anyway, right? The line before. We'll, we'll give people a, few, a couple of minutes, okay? So I'm gonna disappear uh, off screen essentially, but you know, I'll be on with an earshot. So just call out to me and I'll be back in like five or 10 minutes, okay? Um, and, and then we can start, we can start. And if Elizabeth's not there then, then Jing Hang, are you ready to go? Of course. Okay, all right, so, uh, so we'll wait for Elizabeth and if she doesn't turn up in five minutes, then you can take the screen, all right? And, and then uh, while Jing Hang is coding, uh, I think someone else should probably Think up. Hey, Anwar, uh, I haven't, Anwar, um, were you here last class or the classes before? And by the way, you know, you can't have your photo on, right? Photo on means you're not getting any participation points, okay? So you're shooting for 85 max, 85% max in the class. All right. So um, so if you uh, if you want to participate, you can absolutely uh, feel free. Hey, Anwar, yeah. Okay, good, good. You, should, you can't just feel, you shouldn't, have, all of us, we're not having our, uh, unless, you know, uh, all right. Yeah, well, Elizabeth's here. Anyway, uh, so any, uh, Elizabeth, we're not starting for about five minutes, okay? Or uh, So you guys are just going to talk. Uh, and then when we're back, um, you can start coding, fixing up that program we had from last class. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you got to get the link from uh, Ricardo, uh, unless he posted it somewhere, okay? Uh, and then after you, Jing Han can, uh, Jing Han can go and, and maybe, you know, uh, extend the same thing or play, play with it, you know, or we can try and code something else, uh, something else, something to talk. You, maybe you guys will come up with a good idea, right? Um, or we'll, uh, you know, code the, you know, uh, force, force pants game, right? So that's, that's kind of cool too. All right, so I'm going to go off screen. So you guys feel free to just, uh, you know, talk amongst yourself. Just don't, you know, well, you see, silence is very uh, infectious, okay? So once, uh, once you let silence in, uh, into your, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, then uh, no, because you know, it's, it's infectious because uh, nobody wants to uh, be the first one. Nobody wants to start. Uh, and especially if you don't want to start, if there's been a long silence before you, right? Because you, the longer the silence before you, you don't want to be the first one to jump in because more attention on you, you feel, right? So therefore, I think silence is basically kind of uh, exponentially infectious, right? Because if it's, if it's a one minute of, one second of silence, well, you know, already people are reluctant. They're going to be a bit more reluctant to speak now, right? But, you know, five seconds of silence, because you know, that reluctance is going to cause more silence, right? More silence means people get even more uh, reluctant to speak, right? And then it kind of mushrooms after that. So uh, silence is, uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep the airwaves occupied as much as possible, as you can tell. But, you know, I'm going to disappear now. And uh, what I found later on previously was, you know, when I say I'm going to take off now for five minutes, you guys are not even talking, right? You Maybe you're just uh, browsing a book or, you know, watching a movie on mute or something like that. Nobody knows what's going on, right? So you just disappear into your own worlds. So don't let silence take over. Just keep talking. You know, even if you're talking about some random things, uh, but always keep in mind that you can talk about random stuff, right? You know, stuff about movies and so on is fine. As long as someone, someone feels that I actually have something that's more relevant to computer science, right? So, that, so let's just say that someone who has something that's relevant has more priority, right? So they can overrule a movie conversation, right? So that way you can always have conversation, the airwaves, 
will be occupied, but someone who wants to talk about something that is topical uh, will have a uh, right, uh, right of passage, as it were. So let's keep it like that. So then I can feel more comfortable disappearing, right? Going off screen for a, you know, for, for a minute, because I want to give you guys a chance to drive and talk and things like that, right? Never have. And uh, because only then I can know, right? So, uh, I, only then I can know that, okay, well, this is this, uh, based on, you know, uh, some of the things that I overheard when I came back into this room, uh, this might might be a good idea to try, right? Uh, and, and then I could, uh, you know, uh, propose something that might actually actually appeal to a lot of you guys, right? So, and then we can say, hey, uh, let's pick a volunteer and code. So that's that's a cool way to do it. So don't don't let silence take over, right? So it's, it's very, and you know, the hard thing is you can you can't see silence, right? Or you can't hear silence. You can't hear silence, right? It just creeps up on you, right? It's it's always there. It's everywhere, but you can't hear it. Okay. So if you, if you want to hear silence, all you need to do is just be calm and quiet. Okay. Then you can hear silence on silence, and then you can see how exponentially explosive it is. Right, so uh, so uh, just you know keep that in check and and keep talking, right? Just keep talking absolute nonsense too. That's perfectly fine, right? Even if there's some noise in, out there, people don't feel uh, awkward butting in, right? And saying, hey, hey, hang on a sec, let's talk about this, right? But if there's silence, people won't come. Uh, you know, even if they have a brilliant idea, they're not going to come in and say, hey, let's talk about this. Right, but if it's noisy, people will button and say, "Hey, let's talk about this." Okay, all right. So yeah, all right. So play a song, maybe. I don't know. All right, uh, I'm gonna take off for five or ten minutes. Okay, well, what time is it? All right, let's start coding. Uh, Elizabeth, you can start coding at eight twenty, maybe. Right, so seven minutes from now, hey, hey, Elizabeth will start coding at eight twenty. I think we'll fix up the program by eight thirty, maybe. Right, uh, and then have a couple of rounds. We'll play maybe uh, five or ten minutes, uh, and then maybe we can start uh, with uh, Jing Hang. Then after that. Uh, who can start coding this uh, Star Wars, right? Let's start with, let's start with, uh, and you know, I'll also introduce something uh, cool, right? So previously, what we did was, you know, copy and paste it and have the array. What we'll do today is um, copy and paste into a file, right? And even though it's not part of the syllabus uh, or even the CID, the, uh, the course descriptor, uh, but yeah, probably for good reason, because it's just a one-liner, right? So I'll just introduce files. So we'll copy that and put it in a file and then have our program read the file. Right, and for all of the cool content, you know, all the quotes about Star Wars, all the quotes about love, or things like that. So we read from a file, uh, and then we know, right? We have the array, we build the array in the program, which is a really, really powerful uh, ability to have. I think, you know, I don't know why it's not part of uh, any of the lasts or perhaps. All right, I'll think about that. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll do that, right? So maybe Jing Hang can do that, uh, and um, and if you guys can find a good source of uh, quotes, right? But don't let that dominate the conversation, uh, quotes for something, right? And quotes for something interesting, right? Where if you take something and then into, uh, replace one word, uh, then the whole sentence becomes funny or witty or interesting, right? So that that's what I said, you know, that's why that thing was so viral uh, back in the day, right? Uh, when someone published like uh, 10 lines from Star Wars where the word force was replaced by pants. Uh, and it was so funny, every one of those was so funny, right? So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, all of this really cool thing. I mean, you can actually go on Google, right? So, uh, in fact, I think if you just go to Google and type in, uh, you know, uh, quotes from Star Wars made better by substituting force with fang, uh, no pants, right? Uh, in fact, not even that, you know, uh, uh, it's just a short sentence, I think you can, uh, yeah, Star Wars, uh, pants, force. Okay, four, four words in Google, I'm pretty sure you'll get it in the first five or six hits. Right? So because it's so common, it's it's so uh, common now. It's uh, everybody probably knows, right? So all right, I'm gonna take off our screen. So give you some space. Uh, you guys feel free to talk. Uh, switch on your cameras, okay? We're all just friends here. Switch on your cameras and keep talking. And then I'll, I'll be back in five minutes. Unless you guys call out to me, right? You call out to me, uh, then I'll come back earlier. Uh, but ideally, we can start coding um, at uh, eight twenty. All right. So Jing Hang. So after Elizabeth, we've got lined up. Uh, Jing Hang. Uh, I think Turkey hasn't had a chance to go. You can uh, go today, uh, Turkey, if you like. Um, I, I don't know who else. Uh, hey, Rishab, you actually went, right? You you coded. Uh, Rishab, your, your camera's off, by the way, right? Uh, Rishab, all right. Oh, and, and Jacqueline and Maxim and Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth. All right, yeah, Elizabeth was here, I know, right? And she, all right. So you guys, may, yeah, try, try and make sure to uh, switch your cameras on. That way you'll participate also, all right? All right, I'll see you guys in five minutes. All right, bye. Um, so I posted a link in chat to the uh, last link I saw for uh, this, or I guess it's Tuesday's uh, practice. So I don't know if a more up-to-date uh, version or is that 
<clears throat> the most up to date one. That one doesn't even load for me. Really? That's unfortunate. Huh. Is anyone else having issues with that particular link? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't load for me either. either. Hmm. It's weird. I I could open it, but now I can't. Uh, I was able to. You copy paste the. Yeah, I remember that at the end of last lecture, uh, whoever was writing all of this ended up copying and pasting it into a chat. So I'll just repeat that process. Uh, so I need to stop sharing and do that. To, not exactly the cleanest way to uh, show this, but wait a minute. Oh, I didn't make copy everything. Well, shoot. I think if you run it, then uh, create another link. It should give you a new link that will show you the code. Yeah, let's see. It will take a while for the website to load. So you just need to wait. Someone recommended pressing a button here to get a different link. Um, I, the first run. So it clears that shortcut. And uh, I think it should give you an option where you can, oh, you have to copy and paste seven, it. And six RM, or 7C6RM appears to be the link now. I don't know if that changed it at all. Yeah, I think it will. Uh, I don't know if this work. I just upload a file, CPP file. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, that's yeah, it works now. Bit easier to deal with, yeah. Uh, yeah especially since it seems have... like the uh, the copy and paste, like the clipboard, it's only keeping maybe first like thousand characters of the program. So thank you, Jenny. That makes it a lot easier. So if I'm seeing the uh, C program that was linked by her just now. I'm actually going to save that. Even if I have a copy of this somewhere. Huh? Uh, what's the vectors delta thing? Uh, delta is kind of like the difference between the player guesses and the randomly generated price, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see yeah it's defined really in line 56 uh secret cost minus player guess and rather than using an absolute value function in 57 it kind of just well, it makes it sure that if it is a negative value, it turns it positive. One thing I noticed is uh, when I was plugging in some numbers just to try out the game, it didn't actually print out anything. So there's still some room for improvement there.
Meanwhile, I'm going to look into some of those Star Wars clips. Uh, so look, looking at the other programs, Connect 4 sounds like a lot of logic. Tic Tac Toe, less so. Hangman seems pretty straightforward, though. Oh, dear. Um, sorry, I have to make sure this cat doesn't eat my food. So when you make a new vector, is the second thing the the thing that's like inside the vector? Uh, Whenever we make a vector, the things inside the carrots is the type of data type we want to store. Yeah. But the thing on the right, like right after. That's just the name of the vector, I think. Oh, OK. I'm not sure if it's a good thing to link. It looks like I do have uh, some positive results from typing in Star Wars pants quotes. But uh, the top link is a bombs world, and I'm not going to link that here. a lot less than there's 116 on the bombs problem that that thing only provides a handful Results yeah, after yeah. that become a lot less relevant, unfortunately. Great. Okay. All right. Um, so if you guys are ready, we could we could wrap up that uh, that is right game and um, you know play play a couple of rounds maybe, and then and then we can start coding um, the other thing. Is, is that okay? Well, I'm not looking at chat, so you got to speak up, okay? Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Great, great. Awesome. Well, there's a lot of links being shared here. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, maybe Elizabeth can pick up the screen and then um, also uh, let's start editing that code. Um, maybe you guys have already fixed the bug and played. played uh, are you ready to go, Elizabeth? Yeah. So whenever you're ready, just. Um, okay. Did you get the link, uh, Ricardo? Did you? Yeah, you got the link. Uh, so you did share the link. There you go.
Great. All right. Great. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I recognize this code now. Um, okay, so uh, uh, did you guys figure out what the bug was? I mean, what we forgot to do? But well, doesn't tell you like the results from one. Uh, no, in idea one, in idea one, uh, if you take a look, uh, don't run it, don't run it yet because there was there was an error. So uh, you see in in the for loop uh, in the for loop uh, that starts on line thirty seven, uh, we get the user guess and the user name, but we don't actually put it in the array. We just <laughs> we just keep going, right? We just keep overriding it. Um, we no no line line thirty seven to uh, uh, thirty thirty seven to forty seven yeah those ten lines there. So in that in that loop, we're asking the user uh, for your name so for for the user's name and and then they're getting their guess, right? But we're not really doing anything with it. We're just going back to the beginning of the loop and getting that for each of those places. We're not we're not putting the value you we get from the user. Into oh, the we need array. to push back into the array. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we don't even have to push back. In fact, we should not be pushing back. Uh, by the way, so um, in fact, uh, you know, uh, I don't know uh, who mentioned that. Uh, Chris, did you? Did you? Was it? Was that yeah. you? Sounded like you. All right. So uh, pushback is what we would have done uh, if we had said, uh, you know, if we had declared the two vectors of you know the vector string and vector int, the player. What, what do we call them? player names and player guesses. We declared them both as empty vectors, right? Zero size vectors. Then we'd say, hey, here's a value, push it on, push it on the, push it back, push it, push it on the other. So then we grow the vector, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, for five players. Each pushback will grow the vector. We'll push one more on the end, right? So that would push. Now, what we did, however, was slightly different. Uh, and uh, and that's, that's the reason why pushback won't work here. What we did was when we said, give me an array called uh, player names, we told the compiler, give me an array that's already num players big. It's already five elements in there, right? The, now, if you start doing pushback, what will happen is that you have five default, uh, you know, empty guys there. And then your pushback will start pushing the, you know, every new guy on from sixth onwards. Right, so that is the reason why uh, pushback is not uh, appropriate here. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, how do you, uh, from a, yeah, I, I think it's just care uh, and practice, I guess. I was thinking if, if there was a way in which, um, yeah, we could prevent that uh, careless error from ever happening, right? Even uh, no, no matter how careless you are, uh, if, if it's possible to, for the system to figure out that um, this is a pushback done on an un uninitialized vector. So it needs to go. I know it's, it's all messy, right? So you know, I think the right thing to do is basically just uh, do it in this way. So we remember that, you know, we already have, let's assume that num players is five, right? It doesn't have to be five. Num players is determined. To, so we'll, for the purposes of our discussion and argument, let's just assume that num players is five. So what we're saying here is that, um, you know, we've, we've been given two, or, uh, two arrays, vectors arrays, right? So we've been given two of these guys. Uh, and the first one is called player names, and it is an array of exactly five, right? Not five, problems, right? Five. Uh, and the second one is called um, player number. Well, what was it? Player guesses, right? Another five. So what we're going to do here is essentially, uh, since we've also got the index uh, on line 46, go to the end of line 46 and hit enter. And by the way, is, is everybody here? I mean, I can, uh, yeah, my gallery is too small here. Hang on just a sec. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a lot of students. Uh, where's, um, well, I don't know, Eddie's not here. Uh, Eddie actually asked a question, is I is here. Uh, yeah, Eddie asked a question, um, but I um, uh, hope somebody gets back then. Um, uh, okay, all right. Um, so here's what we're doing. Um, uh, yeah, hit, uh, hit enter, sorry, hit enter, sorry. Uh, one more, yeah, okay. Now what we wanna do is we have these two arrays. We just want to stuff the values we got from the users into those arrays. And these are the two lines that we're missing before. Now we're going to supply those two lines. So this was the bug. And this is the comment I made in that YouTube video. I think I, I, I might have got the time mark slightly wrong, right? Um, because I was just fast forwarding around that area. Uh, so, but you can figure it out. Right? So this is exactly where it is. We're fixing it. So we're going to say player underscore names of N. So player underscore names of N. Yeah, it's a uh, shift. Um, and, and off is basically square brackets, right? So, yeah. 
uh, square bracket. Uh, it's, no, it's not parenthesis, it's square bracket. Uh, n, n, n. Uh, n, n inside the square brackets. No, n inside the square bracket. So it's basically uh, uh, the, uh, the element at index n. So n happens to be zero is the first element. n happens to be one is the second element, right? And n is basically our loop counter two. So each time around the loop, n is going to be a different value. And so we're going to be stuffing a different element of the vector. Does, it, does that make sense? All right, so we'll complete the line, right? So I'm uh, getting a bit, bit ahead here. All right, so uh, equals, equals. Uh, what, what is a, yeah, we got a name here. Username, username. And then do the same thing for user guess also. So we're basically putting the um, the value at username into the index n, right, for each of them? Yes, that's all. Yeah. Uh, and you'll see that the first uh, player, the first user, uh, will go into player names of zero. The second player will go into player names of one, right? So if you have five players or 10 players, right, so the 10th player, We'll go into player names of nine, right? Because zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So each player goes into the corresponding slot. So for n, does does it make sense? This is how you know loops and arrays actually work together, right? And they're really great friends. Every time you see a loop, you know an array is uh, you know hoping to get in there. Okay, so uh, right. Uh, all right, so there, there you go. All right, so at the end of this, now, does it is everybody uh, uh, in agreement with me, right? Are we cool that uh, at this point? Um, our two arrays have values stuffed in them. Yeah. So when we exit the loop on line 50, you know, or line, uh, go to line 50 and hit enter. Okay. So uh, at OI, we actually have the comment already. So I think we put the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Right. So, uh, so at this point, our arrays, yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, so we, yeah. Oh, well, well, we actually fleshed out a whole lot more after that. Okay. So player. Oh, there you go. All right. So, uh, in fact, you know, we kind of assumed um, that. Uh, so, you see, in line fifty-nine, uh, fifty-nine, and sixty, um, we are we assumed that the two vectors that we have already have the right names and score and guesses in them because we're using them, right? In in that loop on line uh, fifty-nine, we're saying, "Give me player guesses square bracket n." Right, but where, but where is we didn't do that before, so that was a bug, right? Now uh, we went back and you know we fixed it. So we pick, uh, you, we, we say, oh, player guesses a four. Yeah, there it is. We actually fit it in there. So that's now our deltas will all work. Now all we need to do is uh, just pick the minimum delta, right? How do we pick the minimum element from a, uh, a, a vector of uh, elements, right? So and uh, so go right to the. Uh, do you want to write a minimum function? Right, that's fine too. You can write a minimum function, but you know it's just two lines. We can just do it in line here. Uh, but you can see how to factor that out into a completely different function later on, right? So go to the end uh, of that loop and hit enter a couple of times. Uh, and what we want to do is uh, find the minimum delta, right? Now at the end of that loop, I think it's line 60, uh, 61. No, we we'll get out of the loop, right? So uh, get to lines. Yeah, get uh, get out of the loop. No, 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 get out of the loop. Uh, yeah, yeah. After, yeah, after the for statement altogether. Yeah, yeah. Enter, enter now. Uh, and uh, oh no, no, yeah. Uh, one more enter. One more enter. And then forward slash. Uh, two two forward slashes. We're going to say we'll put a comment there saying uh, find the minimum delta, right? Or find the find the player with the minimum delta. Find the player with the minimum delta. Right, uh, and so again, we'll just do a. So here's what we'll do, right? Uh, this is a funny thing. Uh, I, I, we can do exactly what this is what we do in science, right? How do we do it in science? And I, I never tire of saying this because in science we basically form a hypothesis and then test it. If the hypothesis is, is if the if the data does not agree with the hypothesis, we try and throw it away and find a new hypothesis such that the data agrees, right? So what we do in science is basically always have something to fall back on, right? So we have some backing theory to fall back on. And, if, and, and as, 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 as and when we get new data, we keep revising the theory. And until such time, we have to completely overthrow the paradigm, adopt a new paradigm, whatever it is. But you, we start with the theory. And so that's what we're going to do here. It's basically you know science in two, two lines of C++. Basically, that's what we're doing, right? So our initial hypothesis, our initial hypothesis is that uh, player, uh, player number zero, right? Player number zero is the uh, winner. So, uh, so actually say, right? So make a comment there saying uh, initial hypothesis, player number one is a winner. 
right? So just say comment, comment, uh, comment. Yeah, uh, initial hypothesis, player number one is the winner. Right, so we actually say, you know, this is like science, right? Oh, on the next line. So we're going to uh, basically say, that's what it is, right? So we're going to say uh, uh, int winner equals zero. Right? Basically, we're just saying that's the index. We, we, we don't care about the exact name because once we have the index, we get the name of the score later on, right? So, so we just want the index, right? So uh, int winner equals zero. Equals zero, right? Now, uh, that is our assumption, right? If you're a good scientist though, right? So if you're a bad scientist, we say we have a winner, <laughs> we'll go, right? But no, we're, we're good scientists, right? So we have a hypothesis uh, and uh, no matter how much we want the hypothesis to be true, we want to check it with the data, right? And say, if the data doesn't agree, I'm actually open-minded. I'm willing to change the hypothesis if the data doesn't agree, right? So that's exactly what we're going to do now. So we're going to say for n equals zero, so we're going to do a loop, right? So uh, I do the loop, the standard loop. In fact, we can you can triple click on line, triple click on line fifty eight and just paste it there, right? Triple click on line fifty eight. Uh, no, it's easier. Triple click on line fifty eight. Yeah, triple click. No, 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 not the whole thing. Oh yeah, okay. Let's do the whole thing. Yeah, that's fine. And, and again, why well, you know scratch out the internals, right? Yeah, I, I think it's a is that a Mac or a Windows machine? So it, it's a Windows machine, right? Yeah, it's a Control C. It's All right. Um, so, yeah, uh, so now what we need to do is uh, simply uh, in, inside of the for statement, inside of the for, get rid of all the, get rid of the current current meat of the for statement, right? So get rid of the, yeah. No, not that, not that. Uh, no, no, no that, yeah, that you need. So we need the skeleton of the for, uh, we need to uh, flesh, flesh it out, right? But can, can control Z, can, control Z will put it back. Uh, hit control Z. Okay, all right, good. Uh, so uh, yeah, it triple, triple, yeah, all right, great. Okay, now this is what we're gonna flesh in. Uh, and here we'll say, um, uh, if, uh, in fact, we can start the counter at zero, one, but we won't do that now, right? So we'll do it later, we're all minor, minor. So what we're going to do is uh, if uh, deltas of N, if deltas of N, if, uh, open a square bracket. So here's, this is our uh, scientific test part, okay? If, if the next player, if the next data item does not agree with my hypothesis, right? If deltas of N is, uh, is less than winner, is less than winner. So someone's delta is actually less than the current, my current hypothesis. What do you do? Right? Oh, oh, close, close parentheses, right? What do you do now? You would, you would update it to deltas N, uh, winner is equal, winner equals delta N, right? Right, now uh, winner is equal, winner equals? <laughs> We're not storing deltas, right? Where a winner equals n. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, oh no, it would be. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, what Mark was trying to say was uh, deltas of n is less than uh, deltas of winner. I'm, I'm sorry, deltas of winner. Delta, right? Not not winner. Uh, deltas of winner. Instead of winner, you say deltas of winner. Hey, thank you, Mark. I think that's what you were trying to say. Yes? No, but it kind of worked out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. All right. I, was, I, I, was I was making know, a mistake, but it worked saying. out. I think what Mark was trying to say is, yeah, hit enter, hit enter. Um, uh, yeah, enter here, uh, enter, indent in, because we belong to the if. Uh, I, I, Mark, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Uh, maybe this is what he was trying to say. Uh, so now you want to say, you want to revise your hypothesis and say winner equals n. Yeah. Yeah? So what we did was basically we started with a hypothesis and doesn't agree with our observations. So we're going to change the hypothesis, right? So is that a is that a reasonable thing to do? And we do that all the time, right? And we do that all the time. We do that all the time in life, uh, except maybe some people never do that in life, right? Somebody, even though in face of you know contrary evidence, right? Lots and lots of contrary evidence, they never ever change their hypothesis, right? So, but here is a fantastic, uh, you know, science in a science in a, a capsule, right? So that's what. All right, so I do think we need a close bracket for the for loop, though. Yeah, I was going there. Uh, who said that, by the way? Was it Ricardo? Oh, oh, oh Mark. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. yeah, in fact, because it's just one statement, we, we can either feel free to put the close uh, closing brace for the for loop, or because, because it's just one statement, we can just completely get rid of the, you know, both of those, but you know, it doesn't look so good that way, right? So this way it looks much better. I, I'm, I'm happy to do that. On, uh, so after the for loop, after the for loop at the end uh, of line 70, uh, at the end of line 70, uh, no, not there, uh, and, yeah, uh, enter uh, one more time because we'll go to a new paragraph, right? Uh, and then attach the previous comment to the winner equals zero block, right? So yeah, yeah, uh, so you get rid of the blank line between the two. No, 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 just get rid of the blank line between that and uh, on line 65, get rid of line 65, right? Uh, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, sure, go for it. No, line 65, not, no, I, not 64, 65. Control Z, control Z. Yeah, all right, uh, and then line 65. 
So, you know, that's what that chunk is trying to do. That's what we're trying to say. Uh, hey, someone had a question. Who was it? Ricardo? Yeah. Um, why yeah. would... Why would deltas of winner and deltas of n not equal each other? Because they both start from zero, don't they? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, winner is a static. Yes, variable. yes. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So that is a uh, an optimization I promised I will get back to, and we didn't. So uh, what Sweetburn is pointing out is that uh, I, I again, you should correct me if I'm wrong. You can actually start that loop at n equals one. It doesn't have to be n equals zero. Is is that what is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, I guess. Because you know your your initial hypothesis is already zero. You don't have to test zero again. In the next guy you test is one, two, three, right? So uh, does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe is is there a bug here? Um, am I thinking clearly enough here that uh, that it actually makes sense to you the way that we determine who the winner is? Okay. Yeah, I think I think that would make sense to me. Hey, let's go to the bottom of that and let's uh, wrap it up, right? So uh, at the end, yeah, hit, hit enter a couple of times, uh, Elizabeth, uh, one more time, uh, and then indent in, and then say announce, announce to the, uh, no, that's too much, right? Go back to the beginning, uh, not the beginning. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, one, one more, one more. So there, uh, enter, enter again. Okay, there, okay. So two forward slashes and say uh, announce the winner. Right, and now you can say, see out the winner is, um, the winner is, uh, and then you'd say um, deltas, not deltas, thing. what was it? Uh, player names of N, player, player names of N, right? Player names of N. Uh, yeah, winner is, yeah, that's that's great. Uh, left shift, left, no, left shift. You can use plus unlike in Java, right? So you get it there. Uh, left, left shift, left shift. Uh, one more left shift, okay? Okay, uh, one more, one more, one more. That's left shift. You, what you had was less than, then you, two of those is left shift, right? The double, 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 uh, left, yeah, that's left shift. Um, yeah, let, uh, and then it's player underscore names, uh, square bracket N, uh, square bracket N, and then end, end the line there. Uh, on the next line, we'll say uh, uh, winning guess, right? On this, uh, yeah, triple click on, triple click on the line, triple click on the line and uh, uh, control V two times. Uh, can I control C, you triple click on the line. Right, now uh, hit control C once and control V two times. All right, so now, uh, no, you actually hit control V three times, I think, um, but uh, no, that doesn't matter. Uh, so change the second one to, uh, no, that's fine. All right, uh, change the second one to player guesses, right? Uh, you got to say player guesses, uh, guesses. Uh, and then, uh, and then change the change the tag to the winner is from uh, you say the winning guess the winning guess was the, the winning guess was, and then you can also say the actual price was right uh, and the actual price. One more line. So maybe you were right. You know, you're pasting it three times, right? So um, uh, the the act the actual guess uh, the uh, the uh, the actual price is or something like that. And you know that'll be fair on Mars to Mars too, right? Yeah. Should be uh, winner space, space, in space, the space, 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 the space out of the corner. I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, just one sec. All right. Hey, uh, well, yeah. uh, I think it's called secret, uh, and you need a space after the colon too. Right. I think it's secret cost and sense. I think that's what we call it. We call it secret underscore. Underscore? In, uh, yeah, in, in underscore sense. I, I think that's what we named it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we, we, call, we called it secret cost and then we went back and renamed it to secret cost and sense. All right, uh, so, uh, and then put a space Should after I the put, um, Oh, Andel, and you, you need an Andel? Yeah, Andel okay, yeah. Also, you need a space after the last colon uh, because the number, oh, right. will, uh, yeah, the runner, the number will butt up against the, uh, you know, word otherwise. Okay, yeah. all right. So uh, well, yeah, put endels after the uh, all of those guys. Uh, and then we're actually done. We can actually play this game. But oh, something is wacky here. No, no, it's, it's not, it's not. It's, I thought the whole mm. thing needs to be in a loop, but the loop is actually in main, right? So the loop is, main, is in main. In, in main, you can say, oh, I want to play game one again, game one again. So you can keep going back to play game one. So yeah, we can actually play this game and, and see how, how, it, uh, how it looks. No, 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 oh, you can't do that. No, yeah, no, you no, you need, need a, to be interpolated. You need a left, you need a left shift and then an NL. There you go. Yeah. But I'm pretty Professor, sure you want, you want winner inside the bracket, not N. Otherwise, 
It's just going to give you the last. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry. Thank, thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, Mark. You, you, yeah, you need winner. You need to announce the winner, not the not Anne. Yeah, Anne is always going to be. In fact, it's, it, it, this won't even compile, right? Because Anne does not exist at that point. After after the for loop, right? After, Anne, if you look at the declaration of Anne, right? Anne is declared to live inside of the for loop. After the for starts, you have Anne, right? So I, I don't know if we ever went over the scope of variables, right? Uh, a variable comes into life at the time, at the point it's declared, right? You can't use and before you declare it, right? So it, it comes into, it's called vivification, right? Viv, viv comes from, you know, uh, actually Adam started this company, Viv, right? It's got acquired by Samsung, uh, one of my uh, ex-colleagues. Uh, so Viv stands for life in, in Latin. So vivification is the process of bringing something to life, uh, right? Uh, so, um, and, and so the, the, in, in computer programs, a, a, a variable is vivified. A vivified, even though you're using the variable a lot of places, right? It's not vivified, it's just static, it's just, it's just right there. It's lifeless, it's right there. When is, a, when is a variable vivified? When does it come to life? When it actually does something? When, when it starts dynamically changing values and things like that, right? So that's when, it's, when, when you, you say it's vivified. And that happens only when the, uh, the, uh, the runtime system sees the declaration of the variable. So even though you're using the variable here, if it, it is, doesn't get vivified until the declaration. So at the point of the declaration, it gets vivified and it loses life, right? It loses life at a, another point. It doesn't, even though the program might be that big, uh, a variable that you introduce might be alive only for that part of this big program. Are we, are we all, you know, it, we're not even talking multiple functions here. A single function, right? One in main, you have, if your main is that big, is it possible for, uh, uh, you know, is, uh, or, or are we all in agreement that we could potentially have a variable inside of main that does not live here or here, but only lives here? Is, 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 does everybody know how to do that? Right? All we need to do is, you know, this variable uh, does not live uh, here, so I won't even declare it here. It lives here, so I'll declare it here. Uh, it, 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 it dies here, right? Which means it can be visible outside here. So what I need to do is make sure that this whole thing is its own block. Right? because every variable lives only within the, the closest block inside of which it's contained. So what I'll do is I'll make some, you know, I'll put a brace here and a brace here, and everything that goes declared inside of the block lives only within the block. It cannot see outside of the block. Even though it lives in the block, it cannot see outside the block. Is, uh, are we uh, like totally cool on that? Uh, it's, it's, very, it's, it's, a, it's a very important concept to nail down uh, eventually, right? It doesn't, uh, not maybe not now, but so here what happened was, you know, and, and especially with for loops, it's very important to have loops, you know, variables that are tight, right, tight. Because if you have um, variables that are, you know, free floating and long lived and everywhere all over the place, um, it makes a real mess out of your program. You don't know where the variable is and where it's, it's, there's too much coupling between multiple things. So what programmers generally tend to do is that uh, uh, you tend to restrict the scope of things uh, as much as possible, which is really the heart of object-orientedness, really, isn't it? Because if you, if you think about object-orientedness, what are we saying, right? We're saying that, you know, the entire the power of the CPU is available to me, right? And, but if I use the whole thing, I'm just gonna shoot myself in the foot. It's gonna make a big mess. So what I'm gonna do is basically reduce my own visibility, right? So I'm gonna to take some, some of the power and hide, 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 hide away. So I can only focus on the interesting bits, right? So uh, just like that, um, uh, a, a variable, if, if you're going to say that, you know, I'm, even though I could use this variable anywhere, uh, I don't, I am, for example, right? I, I, I should be able to use it anywhere. I can make it global. I don't want to make it global, right? Because if I make it global, it's a big mess. I can't, I don't know where it's, much, who has it and, so, right? So uh, I like see out and see in everybody. We have to be so careful not to, you know, pass it to functions that don't know what to do with it, right? So um, the global is, it's, it's, and you can, you got to live very carefully, right? Every time. Uh, and uh, so what you do is try and restrict, right? I, I, nothing needs to know any more than it needs to, right? And that is the way to a peaceful life, <laughs> right? Because, you know, anytime that someone says, oh, I need to know, I need to know, I need to know. Well, what do you, what do you need to know, to know that, man? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I need to know, right? So that guy is, is, is you can't live in peace, right? There's too many things you need to know. So uh, I think the, the way to uh, a happy program is to basically say that you uh, know parts of the program that don't need to know about something else won't need to know, won't know about those things, right? We'll make it so. We'll make it so that there is enough uh, uh, hiding places around, right? So uh, you know enough IKEA around, <laughs> enough IKEA in my <laughs> in my programming closet, so that everything has a place 
and then I can put these things in the in those boxes. Um, but of course, you know, the challenge is to design an efficient IKEA, right? Where you use an algorithm to figure out what is the right compartment, you know, what is the right hierarchy of things, right? Because you know, once you get, uh, you know, um, all right. Anyway, so. Um, uh, professor, I had a question okay. about the for loop on line fifty six. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, so in that if statement, are we just turning the negative? If we get a negative value, we're just turning it to a positive value. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. So that is the uh, that if statement is basically an idiom for an absolute value. So it it is it is absolute. Uh, if it's positive, it's going to leave it as uh, alone. If it's negative, it's just going to make it positive. It's 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 okay. the absolute function. And then in the line 66, um, don't can we just start at one since we're comparing the array at zero to the array at zero for the first loop? Uh, line 66, hang on. Well, I had to reduce the font size because of the gallery. Hang on. Uh, wait a sec. Line font. Uh, line, uh, yeah, what were you saying in line 66? For it's so, a font loop, right? Yeah, we're comparing the, the array at, z at index zero to the array at index zero for the first loop. So can we just start n at one? Yes, absolutely. Who said that, by the way? That was me. Uh, actually, you're not even showing up here. Uh, who's uh, who? Uh, can you say your name? Sorry. Um, Chris. Chris. Hey, wait. Yeah, you know, how can you the active speaker and you're not actually showing up on screen at all? I mean, you're here in the gallery somewhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, maybe you're. Uh... Oh, I see. I see. I was looking at the second page of the gallery, uh, and that's why. And you were there. Uh, I think if you're, and I even I wasn't there. So I think uh, okay. Now now we're good. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think Chris, uh, what Chris uh, suggested, let's do that. Okay, so we should just start at one. There's no point in comparing, right? Yeah, we're doing a redundant comparison right there. Is everybody okay? Is, uh, does everybody understand what's going on? And and the fact that, you know, I, the long-winded story where I started was that uh, int n, n basically lives only within the for loop, right? As soon as the closing brace of the for loop is encountered, n dies. So there is no n after that. So if you try and compile this, uh, the compiler will basically just barf and say, I don't know what n is, right? Um, but uh, after you uh, do Mark's fix, because Mark said it shouldn't be n, it should be winner, right? So uh, when you change the n to a winner, it'll work, right? But no, before you do that, let's compile it. And I'm pretty sure that everything else is right in, the pro in this program, as far as I can see, right? In this font size, right? So I'm pretty sure that this is the only error I will get, hopefully, right? <laughs> you know, uh, let's try, you know, let's live on the edge. Uh, all right, there must be an error. How come there's no error? Did you change it to, uh, did you change N to a uh, winner already? Stop, stop the program yeah, for a second, uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, can you stop the program for a second? Uh, I wanna see, you know, I, because I don't remember making that change and unless I basically just spaced it. We did. We did, we changed it? We did, oh, I winner totally equals N. Right. Uh, uh, so that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You know, it's okay because if you change it to N, uh, you can find out later on. Did we? That, but, uh, um, that, where is it? At the end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did change it to uh, winner all the way. But if you did change it to N, I'm pretty sure you'll get a compiler error right there. It won't even compile. It won't run and give you the wrong answer. It won't even compile, right? Because N is not known. I think it's a good experiment to try. Just change one of the winners into an N. Just change change the first one into an N. Not well, we that. know it's not going to work. You just told us. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you did? Oh, well, no, you but you didn't try it. No, 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 it's, you don't know, know it's No, no, you, you don't know, you don't know. You just, I, okay. you, you just, you just told, you just said that you, we know that because you told us, right? So mm -hmm. if you, if you know, because I told you, then you don't know. All right, so just try it out. Okay. Yeah, just try it out. No, no, the winner, the first, the first winner. Just double click on the first word, uh, the first winner word. No, no, online. Uh, Which 72. one? 73, 73. Not that, 73. No, no, 73. 73. Um, online 73. 73. Yeah, just yeah, click, on the the word word. click on the word winner. Uh, yeah, okay, change that to N, change that to N, because that's what it was. And then Mark said, let's fix that bug, right? So, but if you compile that, I'm pretty sure we'll get an error right on that line, right? And the compiler itself will tell us it won't, this code won't run because I don't know what N is. Is it click run, click run. I'm pretty sure that won't compile. I'm trying to... Oh, the run button, the run button. Yeah, I'm just trying to fix my thing here. Oh, uh, sure, okay. Okay. Well, no worries. Okay, no worries. So... All right. Okay, there you go. So and if you mouse over the red button, uh, the red red cross, um, it'll tell you, right? No N is not known or something like that. N not declared in the scope. Yeah, all right. So it's a cool experiment to try, right? Even though you know, right? Or even though you said you know, because I told you, right? Well, you can well, never I, 
Yeah, it's I keep pretty simple to understand, I think. But, yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, that's a very good lesson, Elizabeth, because it's a, it's a good lesson because uh, for me too to increase my uh, bluff proportion, right? Because you know mm -hmm. I got I got to tell you both the good things and bad things uh, equally mixed mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise mm -hmm. uh, you know um, you just start taking my word for everything, uh, which is not good mm -hmm. at all. All right. Great. Uh, let's change that back to winner. Compile it. I have, a, I have a quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the reason. Me. The reason that the code can understand the winner is because we have the int winner equals to zero at line 65, right? Yes, you yes, thank you. And, and that is outside of a for loop, yes? I see. And in fact, here's a, here's a, here's a great uh, way to check, right? Look at the indentation level of the, of the indentation level of the variable that's being declared, right? If it is to the right, it's not visible here. If it is at the same level or to the left, it's visible here. How's that, right? As long as we follow, follow a good coding convention and say, we're gonna indent and use braces and everything properly, right? Now we can actually use this rule. Even if it's a text editor, or even if you're processing a program with, a, uh, with another program, we can tell if a variable's column number is less than the column number of its declaration, right? Then it's still, you know, within scope or something like that, right? Or, you know, within the same function and things like that. But, uh, uh, but I think that's- The what... person that runs everything with, uh, writes everything with Notepad, I just want to say, yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, okay, cool. And, you know, I was just thinking of one counter example. Uh, it won't work if you're, you know, going from one function to another, uh, obviously. But I think within the same function, it, it should work, yeah? Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Let me increase the font size now so I can actually see what else. Oh, actually, let me get my, uh, you know, uh, color glasses. Where are my color glasses? Uh, sure. I'll bet. Uh, let's go with 500. Hey, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to play too. Uh, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll play next too. Yeah, yeah. What's, I wanna... your, what's your um, guess in mind? Oh. What, what, what happened? Why is it not asking me for a guess? Um, I've noticed in the... Oh, no, 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 it is. Oh, wow, what's going on? Yeah, um, in, in the for function on the top, um, we equal the number of players to the number of guesses. So I just think it's just taking one guess at this point, or two guesses. Well, we got two Oh, but it didn't print a prompt. It didn't print a... It, but I put five players. Yeah, but it, then it should go through the loop, right? It should, it should exactly. ask for five different... Um, actually, can you stop and run again? Because I wasn't even following the initial part. Um, so just stop. Um, uh, yeah, and, and okay. Um, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, you entered five again? Yeah. Do you want me to do a different number? No, it's okay. We'll do five. All right. Yeah, so okay. say say A, B, C, D for now, right? Say uh, we just want to make sure it works, right? A uh, and then one. Uh, yeah, all right. A, A, yeah. And then B20 and B30 or whatever. So what happened last time? Yeah, enter, enter. Uh, yeah, yeah. So what happened last time? Something, something weird. Um, I think maybe. Is it possible that we're using the wrong data structure for the player name? No, no. I mean, no, no. It was stuck uh, right there uh, for some reason. Uh, All right, let's play a proper game. Yeah, kill, kill it. Says, uh, it, it. It's limited to four players. No, it can't be. We said it was five. Because it said Cause we're uh, five right now, that can't be the case because we have. Oh, it says uh, how many? Uh, what do you yeah. want to? Uh, what game do you want to play? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, one, one. That's fine. Uh, how many player would you have? Oh, yeah. In fact, we should fix the grammar too, right? It should be how many players. It's, it's plural. Let's fix. Uh, let's fix the grammar too while we're at it, right? So, we have, so it went through this time. No, I shouldn't do one time and not another. Okay, so I, no, I, no, I, yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, I, I know that, but I'm just saying, like it did go through this time. Just simple statement, not to accept that you know we've we're not done. But are, are we using yeah. an array for the names as well? That and is it the kind of structure that can handle uh, character arrays? Let me take a look, right? I, I, I really, uh, let me just run this in my head to- uh, Oh yeah, vector uh, string. So hey, hey, before you run it though, before you run it, fix the grammar error. Number of players, uh, oh, how many players on line 23? All right, now, uh, yeah, so let's run it. Uh, let's uh, run it now. 
I want to see. Uh, let's uh, don't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do it uh, slowly. Okay, you're going too fast. You went too fast last time. All right. Uh, what game do you want to play? Okay, one. Okay. How many players would you like to have? Um, let's if, you know. Let's say three. Let's say three. Uh, four, 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 four. Because you know three had a problem last time, right? But why would three have a problem? Right? Four. Um, maybe it's related to the index. Um, Let's say, uh, let's say, let's say two players now, right? So let's just, let's get a basic uh, thing going. Two players. All right, four. Okay. Uh, player one, what happened? Uh, you oh. said you. we'll do two. Oh, it's okay. So it's I, okay. It. I was just guessing and you know, speaking. Okay. Out. So how many do you want? Oh, uh, it let's, say two. let's say two. Let's start with two. Uh, let's make sure it's uh, going. Uh, okay. Yeah. Two. All right. So let's say uh, player one name. Just say Elizabeth, right? Uh, Elizabeth. Okay, enter. And then let's say twenty ten. So I just yeah, whatever. Uh, all right. And oh, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Well, it had yeah, issues yeah, anything, with uh, anything. a non-same yeah. last time, but uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I see. You think it was? Yeah, I would be very surprised if it was a name. Uh, uh, the winner is Mark. Um, the winning guess was five hundred. The actual guys. Try again. Um, yeah, one, one. one. Uh, let's say five, five players this time. Let's say five players because I think it was getting stuck at uh, some other uh, situation here. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, um, yeah, Elizabeth, uh, and uh, Andrea, guess. Let's say 10 and start from 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever. Right, that's 300. Okay, uh, let's say uh, Anandia, enter. What did it say? <laughs> what did it say? <laughs> I think it's the name. Oh, is that, maybe that's what happened last time. Maybe that's what happened last. Um, did it say? Did we see the status line? Oh, well, we can look at the YouTube recording. Maybe that's what happened last time. I think it doesn't like your name, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, this is the second time, right? In, in two different situations. Well, let's try one more time, right? If it happens one more time, we'll just go and crash the server. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So one, uh, five. <laughs> all right. And then. We'll do uh, a non first. first. All right. Give me. All right. Okay, well, give him a chance. It's not me, it's you. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, no, yeah, don't go, don't go too fast. Don't go to, yeah, I think that's a risk, uh, um, right? So we could get overconfident and go fast and miss the bug. Um, all right, let's make sure that everything it does is what we think it should have done, right? So which means that after we do something, we run the same thing in our head, all right? We run the same thing in our head and say, okay, it did this, and is that what it should have done? Right, and so that just turned out again. Yeah, yeah. So let's do that for everything uh, before we do. Uh, is everybody here, by the way? So uh, last person I see is Max on here. Just give me one second. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Max is on. Yeah. All right. Isai has not got his camera on, and Maxim has not got his camera on. Okay. All right. Uh, he's got it. Uh, all right. So. Um, uh, oh, he was timing out. Timed out after the fourth. Oh damn! I'm so time. sorry. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I shouldn't have. Uh, all right, so I think it's timing out on the user interaction. So as long as we keep that going, it should be fine. Can, yeah, um, right, yeah, in that case, now that we've, I've done the thinking through, you can go at your speed, right? You can just okay. go, uh, all, all you've done so far, you can just go at your speed. Okay. Mm. Mm. You're not thinking about it. We should probably have hey, something. Again. Again. This is, I'm trying to go fast. I'm trying to go fast, but it's not. You know, maybe it's just because it's the online compiler and we have yeah, I'm a heck of a lot of lines of code. Replete wasn't timing out. Can, can you just copy it onto something else? Maybe cpp.sh has got this really crazy. Maybe just someone could command take over a, control my a. Computer. Uh, click in the main window, control A. Uh, you got the whole thing, right? Just click in the main window, uh, control mm -hmm. A, uh, and uh, copy it in your clipboard, uh, control C, mm -hmm. and, and then go in a different tab uh, to, uh, I don't know, onlinegdb.com. Even they give you a shell, right? And then you can just run mm -hmm. it in the console. Um, um. Maybe just go uh, another tab, another tab, open another tab. Uh, yeah, another tab and say online, online C++. No, 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 not CPP data stage. Online C++, C++ compiler. No, it's just oh, two words. Uh, okay. Can someone else do it for me? Yeah, sure. Um, but I just need to make sure that the code is uh, current. <clears throat> yeah, I can do it. 
Um, oh, I, ran, I ran several times. It, it works. All right. Okay. okay. Um, let's. Uh, hey, actually, Elizabeth, why don't we? Uh, is is it okay with you for we can transition over to Chanyi or uh, who is who's who's supposed to go next? Jing Yang, are you got a you know stable computer with a stable connection? Because I think you had some problems last time, right? Um, I'm not sure. Right. Check your computer uh, if you can get a good connection going, uh, and then you can take over from Elizabeth. Uh, and then by the way, can you paste the um, code into chat because it looks like the link changed. Perfect. Thank you. All right, take the take the most recent one from Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth, thanks for driving. Uh, it was actually pretty cool. We actually got it to work, I think. But I I don't know. We we got to figure out that Maybe new thing. Just uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, but you've shared the link, so we can we can look into that and uh, figure out what the issue was with that mm -hmm. link. Uh, yeah, when Jinghan takes over. Uh, and I think uh, Anwar and Turkey and uh, who else has gone? Maxim, you can start thinking uh, about, you know, getting on screen, um, right? Oh, Yan Yu, uh, you haven't gone either because, you know, uh, Ray went, Yan Yu hadn't. Has gone. Um, and Professor, I have a quick question. It's yeah, not yeah, a question. Sure. If, yeah. I, if I put two players and these two players put the same, um, same number, uh -huh. It would it would count the first person as the winner instead yeah, of yeah yeah so those are things you got to figure out right so uh, you're absolutely right Chan Yi so those are exactly the kinds of issues that we have to figure out as programmers eventually right um, but uh, I think uh, what you brought up is a very good lesson for all of us because um, there is a time when that should be looked at right and but there is a time that should not be looked at right and this is that time. Right. So uh, the, the, in the beginning, uh, we should just focus on getting the logic right and not even worry about the corner cases. Right. Because lots of people worry too much about getting the corner cases right, even before getting the logic right. So there is a certain sequence in which we got to do things. And as programmers, uh, even though we're taught, uh, it's only through practice, right? Practice and experience we learn that there is the, this is a sequence in which we got to do things. And certain times, certain times. There might be minor changes, right? Like an object, uh, rules are meant to be broken in certain situations, right? So, um, but that thing you brought up now is is an optimization. <laughs> what was that you brought up? Um, um, not the n equals zero thing. Uh, what was you said something? The the winner had put the same name, uh, same number. And yeah, 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 resolving ties, right? So in yeah, fact, yeah, the ties. algorithm is okay. Uh, in fact, the, it is also optimal. But there is a certain user. There is a corner case in, in the user experience. That's a corner case in the user experience, right? Not the corner case in the logic, right? So I'd uh, say yeah. that's part of the rules of the game because I don't think you're allowed to copy someone else's uh, answer. You can like add one or subtract one to it, but oh, is uh, it right? Is it? I didn't know that. Yeah. So uh, they had they had the corner case in the real game. So they, yeah. and then they got around that. They got around that in the real game by saying, you know, you can't uh, have a duplicate answer. Well, that's so, kind of strange, right? So who gets to go first? Yeah. Who gets to go first in the real game? Is it the um, boss? Or a well, boss? I mean, in, in the real game, they select people at random from the audience. And I think it's the first person that they select goes first. Oh, I see. I, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know how these things work. I thought these were people on stage, right? In, in booths, right? In three booths or the way they do. Um, well, they put them in a booth, but initially everyone is just out in the stage. And then I guess they have like a lottery system to determine who's oh, actually going to play. I see, I see. So there is some luck involved. And yeah, if you're, so if you're first, <laughs> you get an advantage, really. Yeah. I was like totally clueless, right? If you're in a different order of magnitude altogether, right? Here's a bar yeah. of metal, you know, it'd be like five cents or five billion cents. You don't know, <laughs> right? Uh, usually that person knows what metal it is, right? Uh, I'd say the person that goes last usually has a pretty solid advantage because they can always look at, you know, everyone else's uh, yeah. cases and then be like, I'm going to go $1 and buy that one. <laughs> so you're basically trading off that freedom to, uh, yeah, I see. That's kind of cool. It's, 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 I guess it's an ingenious game then, right? This has got these little subtleties and nuances. Okay, so who's going, uh, who's, uh, who, what was supposed to happen now? So Elizabeth gave the screen over to Jing Hang and Jing Hang is supposed to figure out uh, how to get his screen shared properly. Yes, Jing Hang? Um, so okay, could anyone see my screen now? Uh, so that's what I'm saying, right? So go to go open a different tab. Uh, are you able to search in your tab for online C++ compiler? I think- uh, we'll, Let me try. Online say, yeah, I think we'll go, I think we had good success with online gdb.com before. Online gdb.com. 
oh, it was you, right? Maybe it was you, right? <laughs> because you got it in your browser history. So uh, uh, great. Oh, he's here. Okay. Uh, yeah, hit, 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 hit Control-A and just paste the code. Uh, yeah, go to the right to the top, right to the top. All the way, all the way. Oh, uh, which one? I, I thought you left a single character out uh, in, in your copy. Maybe I was just mistaken. All right. Okay. Um, I compiled so, it offline. It does seem to work pretty well. It does work uh, offline? Great. Okay. Fantastic. Now you should be able to hit the run button. And uh, I think this gives you a much more tolerant console, right? Um, yeah. Increase the size of that. You, can you drag it up? Can you drag up the middle or something and increase the size of the that blue thing, the blue gray thing that you had your mouse over? No, no, not there. The, the blue, you know, above the word input, you see that uh, gray stripe? This uh, light, light gray stripe above the word input. Um, Further down. There, there, no, above up, the input. Yeah, there, there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, no, up, up, uh, up, like up, 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 more, more, more. Just conceal the code. Uh, we just need to see the output. Okay. Yeah, okay, all right, cool. Um, all right, uh, so let's play, uh, let's play a game. Actually, increase the font size, you know, or maybe I can, you know, reduce the gallery size. Yeah, that's um, So I'm going to- Yeah, I was trying to make out your letters from you know, just a few pixels. All right, okay. Um, yeah, all right, okay, let's play one. Uh, do we have time for the other games that we wanted to? Yeah, I think we've got time. We'll play one round, okay? Uh, let's play a real game. Okay, this is a real game. Uh, how many how many guys want to play? Right. Uh, so uh, one, I'm I'm I hear I'm game. I'll play. Okay, one, two. I'll play. Uh, okay. So we we'll go numbers. Okay. Okay. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. That's it. Only six people want to play. Elizabeth, Seven. You, want, you don't want to play. All right, so someone said seven. All right, so let's say seven, seven players. Okay. Um, what game we are going to play? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, we only have one. Is it try right? type two? Type two? Oh. Type two? Okay. Two? Uh, you should say you played tic-tac-toe. Uh, you played Connect Four. Nobody coded Connect Four. So that was our imaginary game of Connect Four. All right, uh, type one. That's the only thing we can actually play a real game of now. Right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, seven, seven players. Uh, and the first uh, player. Seven players. Seven players, and, and now it's already picked. So you got to change the game a little bit, you know, code a little bit to say already I've, I've picked a code. I've, I, you know, it has to tell us now. I've picked an item. This is the price. You know, I've picked an item. Now guess the price, right? So uh, you got to say that. All right, my name. So enter Anand, uh, and then uh, my guess is going to be, uh, so uh, it's picking a number between one and a thousand. So um, let's say uh, 450 cents, 450 cents. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, Mark, uh, were you at number two, right? Okay. Uh, I think no, I, was I played last time, so oh no. Oh, sorry. Okay. Ah, sorry. Uh, I, Mark, uh, unfortunately, took your spot. You can you can go next, uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, Chris, uh, put your guess, and we'll just your your we'll, we'll just assume that it's your guess. Okay. All right. Okay. Chris's guess there, and then Chris. Can... Just, <laughs> just say three eighty. Three eighty. Okay. 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 Um, I'm next. Okay. Um, Kiss next. Q I A N Y I and 636. 636. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. You okay. guys are like way off the mark, man. All right, Chris. Chris, I think. I'm next. Oh, question. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, whoever it was. Who, who said, uh, you know, whoever said it was, I'm next. Oh, who and, was me? Okay. Turkey. Uh, and then, yeah, you got spell, spelling wrong on Chris anyway. I know, uh, R K I. T U R K I. Yeah. T U R K I. Turkey. All right. All right. And I'll go with four, 456. <laughs> 456. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> so I can I can only win now if it's between 450 and 456. Or, and then, or uh, okay, between. All right, we'll see. And then I'm next. Uh, Ricardo. Ricardo, okay. Uh, I'll go with triple sevens. 
Triple seven. Okay. Is that what's you, got, you got a cherry. You got a cherry with triple seven there. Okay. Is is that it? Who who? Uh, player six. I think it's me. Just type Ray. Uh, Ray, Ray, Ray. Uh, sorry, how to spell it? R A Y. R A Y. R A Y. Okay. I'll go 778. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All uh, right. Um, onward, A N W A R. And one, two, three. Okay, don't hit enter because it'll tell you who the winner is now. Uh, okay, 123. Now, when they, when, uh, who's playing, by the way, who's, uh, who's got the screen? Jing Han. Okay, when Jing Han gets entered, uh, we'll know who the winner is. Uh, yeah, well, you guys are going to be so disappointed, man. All right, yeah, okay, let's see who the <laughs> winner is. Mark! Oh my gosh, 380. So, Mark, is. that means it was Chris, right? <laughs> Chris. Uh, Chris, Chris, you won with 380. What was the actual price? 383. Damn. Okay, that was really close, right? Really close. You got it within three. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, um, to be fair, I kind of cheated on, on this because it keeps doing the same number first the first time for the first time. Oh, it does? Oh my gosh, we didn't ask right yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll show you how to fix it. You know how to fix it, right? You just have to call S Rand at the top of main, and then every time it'll give you a different number. Yeah, okay. I, that explains it. Okay, so if you, if you go back to main, um, just go back to your main, uh, Jing Hang. Um, go back to the... The code, the code. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll reduce the size, and we won't play it one more time, okay? So you guys can know how to do it, right? So uh, go to, the, the, to your main, to your main, to the bottom of the code, uh, where you have the main. And as soon as you um, enter main, yeah, as soon as you enter main, uh, I think on, yeah, yeah. Uh, before the while loop, before the while loop uh, on line 97, line 97. Uh, line 97. Enter on line, yeah, enter, hit enter, hit enter. Uh, on, hit enter on line 97. Get on line 97. Yeah, uh, get on line 97. Not there, not there. Uh, put it back, put it back. Right, yeah, enter, enter now. Okay, all right. Now we're gonna call this uh, function called SRAN, which says, you know, give me a fresh sequence of random numbers each time, right? So, and, and you do that by saying S R A N D. S. S R A N D. Um, is that correct? Or... Oh, no, no, uh, so no, uh, uh, yeah, no uppercase, uh, all lowercase. You have the same uh, problem as I think Isaiah was doing this last class. Uh, why is it all red now? Is it supposed to be red? Is it, it's red. Can you, your mouse? Uh, can you move your mouse a little bit because it's just uh, over that? Okay. I hope that's not an error. Okay, so uh, open open parentheses, open parentheses. Um, what's that? Uh, no, uh, open uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, 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 yeah, what, what, is there another name for parentheses? You know, we use it so often, it should be uh, open parent, open parent. Um, shift wish nine. I think. Um, shift nine, shift nine, shift nine. Shift nine, okay. Okay. Oh, it, 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 did you do shift nine, nine and zero at the same time or did it automatically put the other one? Um, that's automatic. I see, okay, cool. All right. Uh, so next time we should just try this uh, this one instead of CPP data site. All right. Uh, SRAN and inside there, uh, just say uh, zero, zero. Just say zero. Just say zero. Uh, and then we're going to fix that up. Okay. Zero and then semicolon after the end of the line. Right. And at the, go to the end of the line and hit semicolon. Okay. Now hit enter. Okay. So that is a command to the uh, to the library that says uh, from I'm in this program, I'm going to use the function called ran somewhere, everywhere, somewhere else. I'm gonna use a function called ran. If I didn't call s rand, every single time I call rand for the very first time, it's gonna start in the same place of the sequence of rand numbers, right? Always you get the same thing and you'll see the behavior that Chris described. So just by saying s rand once at the beginning, uh, well, it's not zero, by the way, <laughs> unfortunately, right? So just go in front of the zero, just go in front of the zero. Um, yeah, and say time, 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 and then uh, put the zero within within the within the uh, shift nine thing in the parentheses. Zero should be within parentheses. 
Zero by itself should be within parentheses. Uh, Isn't then, time supposed to be all caps? Uh, no, no. So time is another function, right? Time is a function that returns the value of a chip in your computer that counts the number of seconds elapsed since the 1st of January 1970 or some weird date like that, right? So at any given time, uh, go to the console, uh, go to the input console thing, uh, Jing Hang, I'll show you, right? And go to the input uh, console. Uh, um, input? No, no, console thing, right? So where do you have, where did you run the program? Where did you, where, where's the place where you ran the program? You know, I, I, think, I think something yeah, happened to line 98. Um, Line 98. Yeah, because the zero is no longer in parentheses. So yeah, zero needs yeah. to be within parentheses. I put the zero within parentheses again, Jing Hang. Uh, so you got to put the zero within parentheses again on line 98. No, forget about this, right? Let's not get distracted. Just go back. Uh, well, let's talk about that. And, and uh, yeah, zero. Put, put the zero. The zero should have within, parent within parentheses. That disappeared. Um, could anyone type it in the chat? Shift nine. Shift nine. Hit shift nine. Okay, uh, now uh, put one more uh, after the zero, one more, uh, the close, close it after the zero. Chip, chip, Great, zero. yeah, now it's correct. Now it's correct, okay. So SRAND says, uh, when you call SRAND, you give it a random number, but it doesn't have to be a total random number, uh, but it needs to be different each time because it just, you just need a different starting point in that table of pre-generated random numbers, right? And so what we do is supply it the number that comes from the clock, in, in the computer. Every computer has a clock and the clock has a number of seconds uh, ticking in it, right? It's, it's a, and you can read it like an integer. That is a number of seconds elapsed since some weird date in the past, right? So it's like some big number, like 17 trillion, right? 17 billion, something like that, right? So you take that number uh, from the clock and it changes every single second, every second. But you have to remember that it changes only once a second. So if you call SRAN really rapidly in a loop, it's not gonna make any difference, right? Because it'll be called like a million times within one second. So no, no change at all. Uh, so uh, we have to keep in mind that it can change time. The value of time, right, changes every second. Um, and we take the value of the clock and give it to SRAN and say, SRAN, here is a number from my clock, right? Uh, use that number to determine a brand new starting point in that table. So that's essentially what we're saying, right? It's a kind of, now in order to fix that up uh, a little bit and make it more palatable to the compiler, right? It's a kind of primitive compiler, right? So go to the end of the zero and go to the end of the zero on that line. Yeah, on that line, right? But that's all you strictly need, but we're gonna make it more, uh, uh, go to the end of the zero, end of the zero, end of the zero, after the zero, right? And type in capital L, capital L, okay? Now, strictly speaking, it, it is not required and it may, it may even compile because, you know, zero historically, used to be integers and integers are two bytes, right? These days, integers and longs, they're about the same size, I think. They're both four bytes long. So zero, you can pass it and it's fine, but it's very important later on when we talk about functions, you uh, will we'll know why, right? When we call a function, you should give it exactly the number of bytes it's expecting to be given. So if a function is expecting to be given a long, you should give it four bytes, not two bytes. Now, if you just give it zero, the compiler will give it two bytes. It will pop, will push two bytes and, and call the function. And the function will say, give me four bytes. And then everything goes, you know, haywire. So in order to prevent that in the olden days, what we used to do was say, it's not zero, which is just two bytes. It's zero L, which is zero in the long format. It's zero stored using four bytes, okay? Here's where your data representation and things come into, you know, relevance here. So we're telling the compiler explicitly. Now these days you can compile it, doesn't even result in a warning, but the same statement without the L compiled like 10 years ago, you'll get a little red triangle there or, you know, the yellow triangle. That says, you know, it's warning. You're only passing two bytes, but the function expects four bytes. So you'll say a warning. So, but we'll have good practices maybe, all right? So zero. And the other thing we have to do is that uh, SRAN expects as input an unsigned integer, right? But time returns an integer, right? It's not unsigned by default. It comes from ancient days, right? Back in the day when people didn't actually worry about signed and unsigned, right? So uh, like for these values, uh, so time returns an integer. So what we need to tell the compiler is that, yes, I know you, you the, the SRAN function expects an unsigned integer, and I'm gonna call a function called time, which returns an integer, 
but don't worry, you, you just need some random number. So I'm just gonna take that integer, convert it into unsigned and give it to you. So we're gonna, it's called type casting, right? Something you would have learned uh, to, in, in, to solve quest number two, like right? Limerick is, you gotta cast things. So go in front of the word time, right? Click in front of the word time, click in one, front of the word time, right? And then hit uh, shift, uh, shift, uh, shift nine for a bracket, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's funny. This time it didn't autocomplete with the automatic thing, right? It's funny, right? Now a type uh, unsigned in uh, unsigned unsigned. Okay, now close, close. No, yeah, close there and space. That tells the compiler that take the value that time returns, force that, coerce that. You know, turn that into four bytes, whatever size it is. Turn that into four bytes and treat that as an unsigned integer and take that unsigned integer and give it to us, Ryan. So I know it's a kind of long-winded explanation, right? In order to get this, uh, uh, you know, explain this one line. Um, but this is the significance of that line, uh, which we'll all appreciate in, in good time, right? Maybe it's, it's even, it's, it's totally useless talking to you uh, now, uh, or talking to you ever, talking to anyone ever uh, about these things, right? Because uh, really uh, the only way you can, you, you truly get to, uh, I think, appreciate these things is actually trying it out and, 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 and coming up with it yourself, right? And saying, hey, why the same number? And then, and then you, would, you, would have, you would have found, right? Oh, this is what I got to do. And then, you know, exactly, right now we spent like 10, what, what, I don't know, 10 minutes talking about this. Uh, but, you know, when you come across a need and you just Google it and find it and stick it in there, uh, you know, instantly in 10 seconds, you know, that's what it does. Would size underscore T achieve the same goal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Size, yeah, yeah, size T would be better. In fact, you should use size T, not unsigned, by the way, right? Because oh. it could be an unsigned integer right? and that's wrong, right? It's two bytes and two bytes. That, uh, and maybe saying it's unsigned integer because unsigned by default is just unsigned integer. Size T, however, however, actually means unsigned long. Okay, so we should use size T there, not unsigned. The thank, thank you, Mark. They to change the word unsigned to size T, and we'll be good. Even better would just be to say, you know, unsigned long, right? Because, you know, SRAND, if you look at the man page for SRAND, it says the parameter it takes is unsigned long, right? Seed. In fact, if you do, I'll show you where to find the manual page for SRAND, right? And just open another tab, open another tab in the browser, right? And, and right there in the URL bar, type man, 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 space, uh, space, space, uh, SRAND. S R A N D. That is saying, uh, I'm using a function called SRAN. Where is a manual page for SRAN? Okay, so hit enter. It's going to bring up the manual page, the documentation for SRAN right there. Right, SRAN three, pseudo random number generator. Click, click on the Linux man page. Click on the Linux man page. There you go. That's the documentation for SRAN. It tells you exactly everything about SRAN, everything you need to know, right? So it says you have to include this function there called stdlib.h at the right at the very top, which maybe we haven't done, right? Uh, so, and then uh, say, so look at the signature. Look at the signature of the function. Void, it doesn't return anything. And it takes one parameter. And the parameter is an unsigned, what is it? It just says unsigned, right? It just says unsigned. It doesn't say unsigned int, unsigned long, but unsigned by itself, uh, by default, means unsigned int, right? Yeah, these are all historical um, uh, nonsense that you have to know. Um, unsigned by itself means unsigned int, right? And who knows, right? On this architecture, maybe in just four bytes, um, maybe on some other architecture in just two bytes. But so uh, this is a, a historical baggage, right? These days, nobody would just say I'm signed, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you say, you know, size T. In fact, you know, I have a student, my CS, uh, I used to have a student, my CS2A, uh, who uh, didn't even like the word unsigned and things like that, right? He didn't even use, like to use int and long, right? Uh, who'd say, oh, I don't like to use int. I always say, if I want an integer, I say uh, int uh, 32 uh, space, right? Or something like that, right? So there's some real, uh, there is a convention. Maybe, you know, there is a convention. In fact, if you look in the include files, you'll actually see this is, this is, there, there is a data type called int 32, which is basically a four byte integer, right? Um, and say, and, and that person used to say, that's my style, right? I always say, uh, say in my declaration, when I use a variable, I always say uh, exactly how many bits uh, that variable um, takes, right? So there are people like that and you'll get used to it, right? But on the whole, right? 99% of the code that you'll encounter when you browse the web and, you know, because most of the time what we're doing is we just want to get comfortable enough. They right? say so here uh, to get ahead in programming, uh, here, 
is a good trick, okay? <clears throat> People try and get comfortable with, um, with every little nook and cranny, right? In the programming world, and they spend a lot of time in the trenches, right? Yeah, and that really, I think, is a, is a waste of time, is not so productive to getting a good experience. Uh, I think we just need to get comfortable enough uh, to be able to look at other people's code um, and you absolutely cannot look at 100% other people's uh, code out there, right? Because everybody has their own style and there are all, already, you know, I, I spoke of, of an outlier style already, right? This is this person who only try, tries to use these data types that I even, I, I don't know, right? I don't know there is a data type called int32x or whatever, right? So I, I just say int. And uh, in fact, your programs, uh, I think, may even, even benefit by being type agnostic like that and saying, uh, I just want to say int, right? I don't care. Because uh, my logic should work, regardless of regardless of whether your integers are four bytes or sixteen bytes or a million bytes or you know arbitrary precision, my logic will work, right? So that is the mark of a good program. And uh, in fact, we have an example, right? We have examples all over the world. So the best such program was written by Euclid. How many? You know, thousands of years ago, right? So his logic for determining uh, the GCD of two numbers. Right, you say Euclid, Euclid or Euler. Oh, yeah, I don't know, some uh, ancient mathematician, right? Uh, these, they're algorithms, right? You look at these uh, the, the algorithms by ancient math mathematics, or even the, 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 the proof of uh, prime numbers or something like that. They don't, they don't have, they don't, they're not dependent. Euclid didn't say, uh, here's my algorithm for finding two, uh, the GCD of two numbers, uh, and I, I can guarantee that it'll work, but it'll only work if you use uh, int uh, 71.7x. <laughs> right? So you got to use these particular data types, only then my algorithm will work. Yeah, okay. Well, in that case, well, if there is a situation in which I have to use that particular kind of int, then I'll use Euclid's algorithm, right? 99.99% of the time in the real world, we don't, we're not bound by a particular kind of data type, right? So you want to use an algorithm that is very general purpose. So the best algorithms out there, you'll find, are ones that don't make any assumptions at all. So even about the underlying data types, they'll just say, this is how, this is the logic, this is how it works. That's why if you look at Euclid's algorithm, this is from, you know, it's not even written in C++. It's written using, I don't know, maybe not even Greek, right? Or whatever language they were speaking that time, some version of Greek, right? Some ancient precursor. So it's written in that language. And, uh, and it should be, and, and I'm pretty sure he didn't come up with that in that language. He was just thinking about it in mental mush, right? So if it was possible and it was, he could just reach out and touch another person on the head and transfer that mental mush over, they, he, he would have probably done that. Right, he or she. We don't know if that Euclid was a male or a female, right? Because over history, because of all these societies and all the various uh, crazy values we have, we might have changed. We might have changed and said, "Wow, this is an incredibly uh, brilliant person that came up with these incredible theories." Uh, but you know, uh, histori historically, uh, I think those historians were really bad, right? Because obviously, uh, you know, this uh, beautiful theorem should have been uh, a male, right? Some human man should have come up with that, and that historian, stupid historian, wrote it down with a female name. Right, so we're going to change things now and say, "Wow, well, you know, Socrates, Euclides, and, you know, <laughs> all males." Right, so you know, as as the winners uh, march through history, they, you know, things will change. But um, the idea that we keep in mind is that the algorithms themselves <clears throat> don't don't uh, have uh, any yeah bearing on these things. All right, anyway, sorry. Uh, you know, someone asked a question about SRAND, and then we uh, launched into this whole uh, story on the side, and and so sorry for taking up your time. Oh, oh my gosh, we were supposed to code another game today. Uh, what time is it now? <laughs> yeah, we got about a uh, half hour. Yeah, okay. All right, so if you guys are happy with this, uh, what we can do is, is uh, yeah, someone else, the next person to take the screen can, um, uh, did we do everything we set out to do here, by the way? Uh, Jing Yang, did we, I don't know what we started out doing here. Yeah, we, we uh, compiled the code and played it and made a few changes. Well, yeah, now if you run it I again, think the goal yeah, was to have a game where it doesn't default to 383. <laughs> no, no, it won't, it won't default to 383 anymore. Yeah. With that line. That, that we line. should test it. Yeah, uh, in fact, yeah, but put a comment about that SRAND line. Hey, uh, because you're going to share this URL, right? Uh, go on the previous line and hit enter. Enter. Uh, right, two forward slashes. Uh, Two forward slashes and put a comment because you're going to share this URL, right? People will know. Uh, two, two forward slashes. Two forward slashes. Uh, to, uh, it's uh, to the right of dot. Uh, to the right of dot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the right of dot. I was uh, about to say under the question mark, <laughs> but you know, and then they'll ask, where's the question mark? All right. Uh, all right. You want to say uh, the call to S Rand on the next line uh, will make sure that Rand starts at a new random number 
each time this program is called. On could you repeat that again? Uh, on the next line, uh, I think you can fit a few more words, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, keep on. On the next line, uh, we'll make sure we'll make sure that now you can hit enter. Go to the next line. Yeah, I think I can break the line there. Hit enter. Yeah. Right. Um, that um, that uh, Rand will return. Uh, that Rand will, Rand 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 will return a new random number each time this program is run. I think that's enough uh, information for someone who just picks up the code to know why SRAND is there, right? And then they can just uh, for more information just type man SRAND in Google. For more information, just type man as random Google. Just on the next line. On the, yeah, 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 hit enter there. Uh, every time this program, uh, every, uh, each time, the, uh, no, each time, get rid of the word ass. Get, uh, each time, get rid of the word ass. Yeah, each time this program is run, run, run. And then hit enter, hit enter. Uh, on the next line, yeah, yeah, that's fine. On the next line, you say, for more information, Google man as random within quotes. For more information, Google. Uh, man as friend within quotes. Yeah. Oh yeah, man as friend. That's fine. Okay. I, I think that's fine. I think that's enough information for most people um, who want to take a look at this code. All right. Now, um, how can you share this code? Um, there is a share button. There's a, an orange share button. May I just copy and paste it to the... Um... It's not going to paste correctly because I think uh, the size of your clipboard is smaller than the number of lines of code here. So I would hit the share button. Yeah, share is better. Um, I think. Share button. Okay. Yeah, so there's run, button? debug, stop, and then share. Left, 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 left. Yeah. Middle, middle. Run, debug, there, there, stop, yeah. share. Okay. There you go. Click then. Um, actually, nothing happened when I click it. Try hitting save first. Which is to the right of share? Download code. Oh, you could also download it and uh, put the uh, .cpp file into the chat. That would also work. Uh, let me try. All right, maybe you guys can figure this out uh, offline. Uh, we can go on to the next. Uh, hey, uh, Mark and Jingang, can you guys work on this uh, uh, later? Um, or, or, you know, uh, separately? We, we can now go on to code the next program and then you guys can figure this out and share on the forum or is, is that okay? Uh, all you need to do is just figure out how to share this code, right? So in the worst case, you can just copy this thing into a file like you said, or share, share it, or CPU. Or, you know, repeat so many options. Yeah, I'm not familiar with this uh, website, so let me just see what. Oh, uh, well, you know. Okay, if you hit share, it should pop up a link. So if you're not getting that link, just just try it again, I guess. Yeah, click sh click share one one more time, uh, Jing Yang. Um, yeah, after hitting save, uh, no, just click share, but the share button one more time, and if that doesn't work. Uh, um, you can work with someone in this class right after class and 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 we'll move to uh we'll make it try and make a start on that other game so that oh he just uploaded the uh he just uploaded the source code so it's on the chat right now for the next person who wants to go no 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 that, that's it so you can just take that put it on some shareable link and share it with uh everybody in 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 i don't know on Reddit, that's fine. And, and then we'll just move on to the next program. I think that's, this is it, right? Uh, I, obviously you guys can fill, fill out the other ideas. So this was idea number one and we coded it and played it. I shared the, the CPP file inside the chat. Yeah, yeah, that's what Mark said. Mark said he got it. So you, just, uh, you, you guys have to just figure out a way to share this, right? So let's not use our, our class time to do that. So we can go on to the next pro person and, and, and start coding the next uh, game. Oh, uh, the next person who wants to go can get the source code. Uh, oh, no, no, it's a brand new, uh, brand new uh, empty, empty, empty window. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, any compiler would work? Oh, Turkey, you're going next? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, any any compiler would work. Yeah, all, all we need is basically just an editor at this point. Uh, and and I, I think um, 
uh, if, if, if you are able to have a browser uh, um, uh, in which you can search uh, for some quotes, right? So I, I think, well, let's run with Star Wars for now and then we can change it later on, right? So you can do that and, and we'll try and do that. Um, just let me share my screen. Is that there? Yeah, let's search for, uh, in, a, in a browser, uh, let's search for uh, Star Wars quotes improved. Star Wars, Star Wars quotes improved pants. I think those those the, those words should be enough. Or quotes. If you just put improved. Star Wars quotes, yeah, quotes pants. It also works. It also works. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So let's get let's get. Uh, I think Aaron, you know, twenty or twenty or thirty of those. Put them in a file. All right. So let's get. Uh, yeah. Can you grab? Uh, can you grab? What, what do you say works, uh, Mark? Uh, so just open a browser. Uh, um, uh, Turkey, uh, open a browser okay. and then we'll just go to uh, search for uh, what was it? Um, Star Wars. Oh, 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 Johnny pants. just shared a link in chat. Okay, hey, Johnny, you just, share, you just flashes on and off, right? I don't even get to see it. Uh, so just click on the link that Johnny shared. Uh, I think that's basically it. So I got it. All right. There you go. Okay. Um, oh, this one's already got pants in it. Uh, so I think what we want is to change, change all the pants to fours. I will do that in the editor. Okay. All right. So um, I right, just copy all of that and let's put it, uh, copy all of that, uh, uh, copy all the lines. Uh, and then what we'll do is open up a notepad. Uh, is this a Windows or a, uh, or a Mac? It's a Windows. Windows. Okay. Just open up a notepad window uh, and, and put all, all of those lines uh, with a command, sh a control shift V, right? So I think there's some special characters we don't want to paste. So uh, uh, open up a notepad window uh, okay. and then um, Oh yeah, oh, actually, oh, this is a uh, Visual Studio also gives you, uh, oh, obviously Visual Studio, you can edit that. Yeah, gives you everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, let's get rid of all the double quotes. Uh, let's get rid of all the double quotes and, and the blank lines. Uh, how do you get rid of the blank lines? Um, yeah, get rid of the double quotes first. Where's the replace all? Hmm? Oh, yeah, replace all. Hmm. Oh, didn't do it? That's maybe weird. I need to just put a space or. No, no, maybe it does it in a selection. Um... Oh, there it is. Uh, you know, it highlighted things. I think that's when it'll do it. Uh, there, you go. there you go. All right, cool, cool. Uh, oh, it didn't do, it didn't, didn't do the line. Uh... Oh, they were. Uh, they, I think they were intelligent quotes. There you go. That's it. Right. right. Okay. Uh, how about the bl new lines? Uh, well, we can remove that programmatically. I think we can just do this. Oh, wait, we can just remove that programmatically. That's fine. Which is really yeah. All right. So let's go into your program. Uh, so is it save save this into quotes.txt. Save this in a file. Oh, well, actually, uh, okay. remove the word uh, pants. Uh, change. Replace the word pants with uh, force. Uh, replace the word pants with force. Okay, all right. So these are the original quotes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just say force, uh, force, uh, save, save this as force quotes.txt or something like that, or quotes.txt, uh, because we can change it later, right? Just say quotes.txt. Um, uh, Q U, Q U, uh, Q U O T. Okay, all right. Now let's go into your program. Uh, let's go into your program, and we'll do a couple of really cool things here. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is basically open a file and read all of those into an array. Right, read, and this is something that is a very useful skill to have because later on, when you go and you know, regardless of which programming language you do, uh, you're going to have most of your data is going to come from files, right? Really, especially in your machine learning and all, you're going to have tons and tons of data out in files. So uh, this is something that you'll have to do many, many times. You basically open a file, suck it all into memory, and then close the file, right? So that's a, so, and it's it's a pattern that you will you know repeatedly use millions of times, right? So uh, let's go uh, and uh, out here. Um, let's just uh, score, uh, uh, let's see, um, in main. I think you need uh, to include F stream. F stream, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hash include F stream uh, at the top, uh, F stream. And I was thinking about something else. Uh, no, it's just F stream, not I F stream. All right, so in main, let's in main, uh, let's just, so uh, I, the first line, let's say uh, indent in, and let's say um, vector, um, Vector uh, of strings, vector of strings, vector of strings, vector, uh, yeah, vector of strings. Um, and then uh, say uh, quotes, 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 space, space, quotes, right? And, and then I hit semicolon. 
Uh, and then uh, one more, one more enter. And now we'll say uh, read quotes, uh, read underscore quotes underscore from underscore files, right? Let's, we're going to create a function called read quotes underscore, right? And then open parentheses. Um, and then give it the name of that file. No, open, no, did you say parentheses or uh, I can see? Those were curly brackets. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Okay. Uh, uh, parentheses. Uh, and then give it the name of the file that you just, uh, and then it has to be within quotes, right? Uh, uh, within quotes. Oh, within quotes. quotes. Oh, I see quotes, quotes within quotes. Okay. <laughs> within quotes, quotes at txt, right? Uh, quotes, uh, quotes. Uh, no, it has to be double quotes, right? So uh, within double quotes, oh. quotes dot txt. Right, and then uh, you also uh, need to give it. Uh, we're going to tell it right. Read from this file and put everything in this vector. So we're also given going to give it the vector inside of which we need to put those files. Right. So you just say uh, comma after the after the after the double quotes. Say comma. No, not there. Inside of the we're going to give it two parameters. Right. Uh, and the second parameter is going to be quotes. Right. That is our vector. Right. In fact, let's actually make it more uh, uh, readable uh, or more instructably uh, ins instructive. Instead of say, instead of, instead of quotes, the variable quotes, call it quotes underscore back, right? So it's all very clear um, that, you know, for someone, for another student who reads this, they'll know that we're passing the quotes vector, right? So when you pass it also um, uh, back VEC, right? And, and then also here you say quotes underscore back, right? All right, great. Now, now let's go ahead. Uh, uh, presumably, after that function is done, it would have told us how many, it would, it, no, not told us, it would have read all the quotes in that file into that, okay? So that's what we're going to code. So above main, above main, uh, we'll create that function. So we'll just say, uh, one, one more black line. Uh, let's, say, let's say void, <clears throat> void, uh, uh, the name of that function, read uh, quotes from, uh, yeah, uh, from files. Is everybody following along, okay? I think he forgot to send me call at the end of the um, function call. Right, right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Chris. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, files. And then uh, give it the two parameters. That, you know, the first parameter is going to be string space file name, right? String, uh, and then it's space file name. Yeah. Well, your F is like uh, your stylish app. It's not your career. Oh, this is Visual Studio. Uh, I yeah, it's that. Visual Studio. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, comma. And then uh, the second one is going to be a vector of string. Uh, vector of string and here's the funny thing okay so and, and again just uh, uh, we haven't talked about functions and parameters yet but uh, for now for now just uh, just say ampersand after the after the closing um, um, angle bracket after string closing angle bracket say ampersand there actually not there but just before the word uh, quotes just before the word quotes uh, quotes back right or string uh, is, uh, s t r i n g s t r i n g uh, all right, and then space, and then space, and then ampersand, ampersand, uh, I think shift seven, shift seven, shift, shift seven. seven, right? Now you say uh, quotes, uh, or say uh, back, say back, 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 right? So that means, uh, and then get rid of the space after the back, and that's the, uh, and that's the function, basically. And we're going to quote that function now. Get rid of the space after the back, and then, um, and then open the, your, uh, the, the curly brace, and then curly, curly, close curly brace. And that's where we're going to code that function, right? Uh, okay, so that's where the function is going to be. And let's also insert one line comment above the comment, uh, above the function to tell us and uh, people that are reading, right? Uh, yeah, okay. And say, uh, read uh, lines from file or read non-empty lines. Right? Because we know that there are empty lines, right? Re read non-empty lines uh, and say N-O-N, right? right? No, no, not none, right? Non-empty lines, non-empty lines from file name into the vector vac. Right, um, and um, um, Professor, I had a question about the ampersand. Yeah, uh, that's what I meant to say before. Uh, let's, uh, uh, we don't wanna spend time talking about that, but uh, unfortunately I, I recognize um, that thing, right? It's, it's um, just, uh, let's, uh, let's just assume the that- The phrase is you're I waving know. your hands. <laughs> Yeah, let's assume it's magic for now, but I can assure you, it's, I assure you that it's not magic and it'll just be resolved in two, two lectures from now, right? So ampersand means that we're not passing, we're not giving this function a copy of this vector, we're pass giving it the actual vector so that anything it puts in that vector, it'll be there, right? If we didn't put the ampersand, it means that, you know, uh, well, I got a bunch, uh, I got a vector, but don't give him the actual one, give him a copy. And then whatever he does to the copy, I won't have done in my, that's what it means, right? But we'll go into the details of that later. 
right? Uh, but thank, thank you for bringing that up. I was actually worried someone actually <laughs> will we'll pick that up and uh, we might have to talk about that. All right, uh, so all right. So this is, uh, so we, yeah, that's, that's a comment, right? That's what we wanna do. So the first thing we wanna do is basically create a stream, a stream that reads from that file, just like it is CN. Right? So what we're going to say is, and it's an input file stream, a input stream, just like we want to create something like CN or I string stream, right? So we're going to say I F stream, right? Uh, I think it's I F stream. Is it I file stream or I, I think it's I F stream, I F stream. Yeah, space, uh, okay. and call it I F S. Let's not call it CN or something like that, right? So call it I F S because I input file stream. And then it is a function as well as it's a constructor function, right? So, and we're going to give it a parameter. Uh, in fact, no, let's open open a parenthesis right there and say file name, right? And say file name. Uh, no, uh, but we need the word IFS, right? Uh, IFS right there. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Looks and then like IF stream should work. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Semicolon, right? So I hit enter. Now IFS is our equivalent of CN, right? We actually got uh, something that we can read lines from, right? Just like CN. Now, what we're going to do is simply say, uh, while um, I think we can use get line. Right? I think we can use get line. Yeah, actually, you declare a variable. Declare a variable at the top uh, saying line, uh, string line, string line at the top, string line. Okay. Yeah, I think so. All right, now go, uh, now you can say while, uh, while uh, get line. I think the syntax for get line, I think it, well, what goes first, C in uh, or, the, or the string? I think CN goes first, right? Usually, yeah, I think CN goes first and then the stream. Okay, so so you say get line. So get line, uh, open open uh, open um, parentheses and say IFS, right? Now we're not reading from CN. We're going to read from IFS. Comma, comma, uh, line, line, right? So uh, what is the, what does get line return a number or true or false? Uh, can can someone quickly look look it up? Um, all right. Anyway, so all we need to do, we don't even need, we don't, we don't even need the uh, braces. We can just say uh, vec dot pushback. Uh, enter, enter, uh, enter. Vec dot pushback. Uh, vec dot, is a tab tab in tab in tab tab in because it belongs to the while, right? And say vec dot pushback, push underscore back. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, push underscore back. Uh, uh, and then within parentheses, you just say line. Yeah, now uh, semicolon. Now that will push every single line. That's it, that's that. In fact, that is your entire function and that will push every single line. However, in our comment, we said we only want to push non-empty lines, yes? So let's actually filter out non-empty lines. And so just before the uh, before the whack, you say, if, you no, know, no, just on the same line as a, you can you keep everything on the same line, it's actually a pretty cool too, right? So you can do that. If, if line dot length, I think length, I think length, Line is a string, so string dot length. Yeah, if line dot length greater than one, I think. Yeah, you can say line dot length. You can also omit, you know, very short sentences. In fact, we know that it has to have at least. A, yeah, if, line, if you can omit lines that are less than uh, four, ten lines, ten characters, right? If line dot length less than min, right? Just say min, right? Say so if line dot length less than min length, right? All caps, all caps, and we'll define min length up there, right? Min underscore length, yeah. Uh, greater than, greater than, sorry, greater than. It should be uh, greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to min line. Right? Uh, yeah, okay. Then we push it into the vector. Now, uh, right at the top of the function, uh, where we say string line, you can also, above string line, uh, we can say const int min length, yeah, right there. Uh, yeah, okay. enter, enter, uh, enter, yeah, const, uh, I think const int, uh, int min underscore length, I don't know, what do you say, is it 10, 10? 10? 10 should be reasonable, yeah, 10, so equals 10. And no, I mean, you can constant equals 10. You can just initialize it right there to 10, equals 10. And, and then uh, re come and correct the comment and say, uh, read uh, lines uh, at least uh, min length uh, along or something. No, no, not that, the, the comment you already have. You just need to correct the comment because it says non-empty right now. Uh, read lines greater than min length along, right? Or something like that, you got to say, Min length long, yeah, min long into, into that, into that. Yeah, so that's, and that's it. That is our, I think that is our 
function. In, in fact, we can actually make this function uh, more interesting, right? And we can say, what happens if you tell the function to uh, read a file and it read no lines at all? Every, li every line it read was uh, invalid, was empty or, you know, was less than, right? So every line could be empty, right? So here we have a very simple check to see if a line is acceptable, right? We just say it's gotta be less than a certain length, but you could have a more sophisticated silent checks there. You could say, well, the line shouldn't have funny characters. It shouldn't have swear words. It shouldn't have double quotes. You can do all kinds of things, right? You can even pre-process the lines if you want. You can turn them all into lowercase, uppercase. You, a whole, you can build a whole lot of fanciness into it, which means that, you know, there is actually scope for adding uh, reading lines and then read it, and then that function actually returning some information saying, well, not only did I read lines, but I also did some other things with it, right? So it would be useful if that function returns something that tells us that it did something more than just read lines. So to do that, let's just say, embellish the function a little bit and make it not return void, but actually return int, right? Say, uh, turn, turn the void into an int. And then, uh, and the comment, let's uh, fix the comment, uh, uh, the header comment and say, it returns the number of lines actually uh, read. Right, it, 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 on the next line, on the next line, now you say one more comment, right? Return the number of lines actually read. And then, uh, and then at the end of the very, uh, very end of the function, you can say return uh, vector length, right? Although the length is actually known to the caller, right? But there's one more call for them, right? They have to call, oh, right, vector length. Oh, this is how many lines were actually read in. Now we actually can return it. That's actually a whole lot more convenient downstream, right? So now uh, at the end, you can say return vector length. Yeah, back, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry you, I, I, I thought you started typing it. That's why I was silent. Vec <laughs> uh, vec dot length. Oh, is it size? Size? Is it size? Vector size. Oh, uh, it's a function call, by the way. It's not a property. Anyway, it's JavaScript, I think, also some language. It's a property, so you can actually refer to it. Right. So, all right. So that's it. Right. So that's going to read lines from a file, put it in a you put it in a vector, and return the size of the vector. Okay. So now read. Now uh, where you have uh, the call to it on line twenty-five. Now uh, you can say uh, n int 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 n lines int n lines. Uh, so uh, on the on the, on the very beginning of the line, uh, very beginning. Uh, say yeah, right there. Uh, at, in, further to the left, right at, at the start at the at start of the tabulation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, before the R, uh, that's what I should say. Before the R, right? Uh, you say int uh, num lines equals or n lines equals equals. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you need a space on this side then. Yeah, you, you have a space on that side, right? Okay. All right. Now on the next line, on the next line, you say uh, if num lines greater than zero, because if num lines is equal to zero, you don't, you can't do anything, right? So if num lines greater than zero. Uh, in fact, what you should do is not do the entire logic for if num lines greater than zero. What would the, the better practice to do? Well, for me anyway, right? Is because if num lines is equal to zero or not equal, to, if less than zero, uh, I don't have anything to do, right? I have an exit condition right there. So I have an out. So anytime I have an out, I just take it immediately, right? That means then I don't have to worry about that condition anymore. I can focus my full attention on everything that is not an out. So what I would usually say is anytime I have an out, I take it. So what I would do is I have an out there. If num lines is less than or equal to zero, because it's an int, right? It could be less than or equal to zero, right? If less than or equal to zero, uh, no, not greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, less than or equal to, right? Uh, and then you can, uh, yeah, uh, open, a, open a brace, open a brace, open a brace right there uh, and say, uh, see out, uh, the, the, the input file was empty. Right, and then exit right there. Now see how the, imp the input file, and then you can tell it the name of the file too, right? You can say input file, um, yeah, uh, yeah, less than, I don't know what it was called, yeah, file name. Oh, would it be possible to have a negative number of lines or could we just make it equal zero? Instead. Yeah, yeah. I, I thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said less than or equal to, uh, just to be more defensive, because it returns an int. And although we know that we are the author of the program, we're never going to return an int in a negative number, right? But maybe in future, uh, someone decides to say, "Hey, you know, uh, I want to use many negative numbers as many sentinels, right? Maybe uh, you know, I return zero if the file was empty. I return one if the file contained invalid characters. Uh, negative one, negative two, negative. Three. Each one of those negatives could be different numbers, right?" You're going to want a so, semicolon at the end of line 28. And a new line too, uh, line 28. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the file name here. I think we need to have it as a, a global value so it can be read as a main because it's only- Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's fine. In, in, main, in main, on the first line of main, on the first line of main, uh, mm -hmm. I think this is what he's saying, right? Say, yeah, 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 yeah string file name equals quotes.txt. 
Is is it what you're saying? Yeah, I, I wanted like to have the value file name inside yeah, yeah, main yeah, yeah. or as a global. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then where you have quotes or txt in quotes, you just say file name. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're one minute. Up. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> actually passed. We're ten minutes past class time. Oh, uh, you! Wow, wow! All of you are there. Um, well, you guys should really be going to your next classes, unless you don't have any other classes. Um, so that's fine. I'm happy to keep going on and on. Um, but uh, well, you guys want to take over, right? I mean, you can you can take over and play if you want. I, I, it's because it's a nice juicy opportunity to code. I don't want to take this away from you. You guys want to code on your own? Uh, you, you can you, you can complete it on Tuesday. Right, or if you guys want to complete it with me on over the weekend too, just let me know. Right, I'll try, I'll try and find a time, and we can get together and complete it. Um, but you, you, you can take a crack at this. Right, you know what to do. Right, all we need to do is you've got all the uh, strings in vector. Right, and you got to ask the user, uh, give me a name, uh, give me, uh, give me something that you want. Right, say so give me something you want to change. Right, they could say pants, or they could say chocolate. Right, and then, and then you would say take the word chocolate. And then take the pick a random sentence from the vector. You have to use random, and then pick a random code, right? Select a random code again. Remember to use S rank, right? Uh, and you have to remember refer to this video, obviously, right? If, if necessary, right? Use S rank, so and then pick a random code. And from that random code, you know exactly where uh, you find the word force, right? Every every code has a word force in it, right? So all you need to do is set up a string stream, read one word from it at a time, right? If that word is force. Just print it out. If, if that word is not force, just print it out, right? If that word is force, then don't print that word out. Print out the other word, right? Otherwise, and then you do that for every single word in a loop, you will find that every single word has been printed except the word force, something else has been changed, right? So the user will actually get a random code, right? In which one word force has been changed into the word that they wanted. May not be pants, right? Maybe they said, you know, uh, you know something else. And uh, let's say, you know, I find your lack of force disturbing, right? And, and maybe they said, you know, uh, glasses, right? Glasses, right? So is it glasses? You don't have to worry about those blank lines because it's actually taken care of in the uh, script we wrote or program we wrote. Which, which oh, one? I see. Uh, these yeah. extra spaces between the codes. I was trying to take them out, but apparently oh yeah, you don't have to because yeah, it's all taken care of. That's, yeah. that's that was really cool. In fact, you know, I uh, it, biggest... it we wanted to do that, right? We tried to do that before. We let's uh, we said, oh, let's get rid of the blank lines, and and then we decided it's easier to do it programmatically. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest barrier now to running it, uh, other than compilation issues, is maybe the file path that it's in and whether or not the uh, the quotes.txt file is actually in this it, somewhere that it can find it, like the current working directory. Well, it sounds like you guys have things in under control. Do you, do you need me to stick around or, you know, I, I, I can be around, but, you know, um, but the video will just get too long uh, if you want. Um, do you want to leave the video running and I, I can take off? I can just you know, go off screen and mute and right and or you know or end the class if you want. Or how do you guys want it? Well, uh, I mean, I can be good to test it before I get going, just so we can take a look. All right, at well, it. Well, all right. How about you guys do it? Right, I'm just going to take off. Uh, I'll be off screen. You can call out to me. Right, you call out to me if you want me to come back. I'm happy to do that. Uh, otherwise, just go ahead. I think you guys are having a great time here. Right. Yeah. Uh, do we have any compilation errors when you try to run it? Um, let's save and see. Yeah, it does give me some. What does it say? Oh dear. No, line dot length is not a property. Line dot length is a function, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So after length, you I have see. To, right. Uh, uh, whatever. Yeah. I'll just uh, fix the compiler errors, right? Uh, and I think maybe it was a uh, missing uh, an include file. Quotes was declared in the scope. Uh, so I think you're using quotes out, out of scope somewhere, but let, let's uh, compile it one more time. Uh, let's see. Oh, quotes.txt might need to be in quotes. Oh. Where's the errors? Where are the errors? I don't see any errors. Oh. Um, starting from here. Oh, you have to hash include vector at the top. Sure, that will yeah. make a ton, a ton of these errors go away. Right at the top, after hash include uh, f, uh, f stream, uh, you say uh, hash include vector. I'm pretty sure at some point you also have to hash into that stream, right? Because you know you got to break it up, break it up into tokens. Okay, that's my only problem here. The file name. name. Uh, I think that needs to be in quotes. Oh, within in, quotes. Within quotes. Yeah. So line twenty-four okay. quotes.txt needs to be in double quotes. And, and then you replace it. 
Oh, well, you, you can you can replace uh line twenty seven the code dot txt to file name. Yeah. The run with no error. Nice. Now, um, that's pretty cool. Hey, uh, okay. by the way, some of some of you guys are not even talking, uh, speaking up. Okay, so I just I don't hear some voices. Um, uh, I think uh, Isaiah, Ricardo, all of you guys have to speak up. Okay, because I, even though I'm going to be off screen, I, I I'm going to be listening, and uh, I'd like to hear all of you. So I would say now might be a good time just to save it, throw it into chat or the Reddit and uh, close up if, unless you guys want to keep it on. I mean, I can zip it with the TXT file and the CPP. That'd be a smart way to do it. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do next, are you guys going to continue with the, uh, with locating the pants and like four since changing them with the pants? Um, if you'd like to, but no. I'm, I'm going to get going personally just because I've got uh, something else we got to get to. Hi. But uh, thank you for driving. That said, I do want to get uh, just a copy of uh, what you right, finished gotcha. there. So that, uh, Let me just upload it now. Thank you. Okay, and I'll I'll put it in the uh, write it out with it. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.